Hello everyone and welcome to another VHS Vault stream. How's everyone doing? Hope you're having a wonderful week so far. Uh, yeah, today we're doing VHS. It's gonna be fun, gonna be chill, gonna be weird. We have some MLM videos, we have some exercise videos, we have all sorts of weird, forgotten, flickering memories of VHS past. Whew, that's a lot of words. So welcome, hope you're doing well. Um, let's see, we're only on Twitch today, so no one needs to like the stream. Um, Halloween Town, thanks for a five stream streak. Two plus ten equals twelve. I know math when it's basic addition, right? I didn't make some big mistake. That would be embarrassing. Watch the first episode of Fallout. It was excellent. Excited to watch the rest. Please don't spoil me past episode one. I'd appreciate it. Um, and I think that's everything. Welcome, welcome. Hope everyone's having a good afternoon or whatever time it is by you. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, what did we want to start with? We'll do the stamp uh, MLM. I have a stamp MLM. Just got to find the video. Because I have about 30 tabs open right now. As you do. So I need, to, I need some kind of tab organizer. Oh, actually, before we get into the MLMs... I do have one thing that's relevant to today. The former Cowboy Ditka matched wits with the former Bill Simpson in a battle that could go down as one for the ages. Roll it. Now, I don't know sports, but I do know true crime. <laughs> Today's game features two of the all-time legendary NFL greats. God, listen to that crisp audio. Has this been remastered in Dolby Atmos? It's incredible. O.J. Simpson, who played nine seasons with the Buffalo Bills, returns in this postseason to lead his alma mater to a long-awaited Super Bowl victory. Mike Ditka, who as a player earned a Super Bowl ring with Dallas, hits the youthful Cowboys as they enter their first Super Bowl in 14 years. You have a tab Ooh. organizer, it's called Tree Style Tabs. I should get that. Welcome you to come. Make streams easier for organizational purposes. Because I'm pretty loosey goosey. Um, I'm sure there are people who, who thrive on like structure, and that's awesome, and I get that. Um, but for me, I don't schedule my show. Like, like I know what I'm going to watch. I have a big pool of videos that I'm like, these are things I'd watch today. And people would probably schedule it like, we're going to do this first, and then this, and this, and this. I don't like to do that. I like to feel it out as the stream goes. Like, if something's kind of a lull, then I'll, I'll go to a video that's more high energy to try and, you know. We're doing it live, basically. I'm feeling out how things are going. Um, but that would help. So I'm not just like, what, what's this, what's this, what's this, what's this? Computer Bowl. He died yesterday. That's why I'm playing this video. 93, a matchup of wit, strategy, and luck for these Hall of Fame superstars. Start of Computer Bowl 93. There's no doubt about it. Big names may be on offense. With the... What year was this? 93? What year was the trial? Defense is what got I guess I should say, what year was the Bronco chase? Buffalo Bills to the Super Bowl, and that's what's going to rise to the occasion of the day, the Bills defense. Dallas is bringing the whole... 95, so this is two years before 96. Was the July. trial 96? Or was the incident 96? You will be served. Here we go, we're working. Now, this could be a good play on you. Your defense won't be ready for this. The games people used to play. I understand, like, Pong, right? I understand playing Pong or most, like, games that are old. I'm not someone who's, like, against old games. Far from it. I love retro gaming. Like, all the way back to even, like, Odyssey stuff. I find the history of video games interesting. So, like, not against retro games. But this looks boring as shit. I've never been a sports person. Profane Priestess says you can group tabs by subject and you can put tabs under other tabs such as they become a set so you can put all your stream tabs into the same group. Ooh, that would be nice. I'd probably organize them by, like, length and then maybe, if I don't know if they're subsets, but if so, I'd do length and how good they are. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you, obviously. <laughs> 
but I have videos in my head that I'm ranking when I find them. I'm like, this is a really good video. This is the video of the stream. And then other times I'm like, this will fill five minutes. <laughs> I'm joking. It's all entertaining, but you do mentally know what bits are probably going to work better or not. Incident 94, Trial 95, Civil Trial 96. Okay. All right. Well, that was shortly after this then. Man, right over you guy. You can't coach against that stuff right there, OJ. Start of the third quarter. What is it? I'm to be honest, the game might be worth it if it was like a 16 bit game like that, but then just suddenly full motion video creepy <laughs> referee guy shows up. I don't know. I'm into it. Maybe that's the creepy pasta lover in me, though. One sec, I'm trying to change this up a little bit and I can't get it. No, not the alert box, this. Better. Is the bottom exposed? Of course I am, I'm on camera. Problem with my bills, you know, when they're bad, they're real bad, but hey, they're a second half TV. Oh, nice, Bob, huh? That's good. Prove that against Houston. I both of them, come on. You gotta, you gotta be come careful on. now. <laughs> wow, my God. I got what? a touchdown out of it. Oh, the fake! I went with a field goal fake. It was an accident. <laughs> it had to be an accident. <laughs> I want. Oh, I don't want that line. <laughs> with a fake punt here. Now look, you got all these dummies squeezed in here, OJ. You got nobody covering my wide receiver. This is the same play we worked on Green Bay. This could be the greatest coaching call in the history of the Super Bowl. Watch this, and he outruns this guy. No good. No good. My whole life depends on a kicker. That's just what I wanted in life. I hate to depend on kickers. You gotta be quicker than that. No wonder you've never been coaching. That's the late game right there. You gotta make it like you gotta make it out of my mind. Now you know how hard it was on me all these years. I had to do that real fast. Playing the Sega Genesis, yeah. Genesis was, apparently Genesis had better sports games. I was never a sports game fan, though. I know that. Thanks, Phoenix. Yeah, I think you're in the fifth quarter. Right. I didn't want to do that. Yes! 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 That's what I'm talking about. Who we got here? We got BB happening here. It sucked a bit. All right, defense. We need a little defense. You didn't try to there. I, I came with a blitz. You're so predictable defensively. One of the problems you guys had this year, incidentally, yeah. maybe one of the reasons you're out of work. Well, we didn't actually. We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, creeping me out. All right, let's get to the MLM video. <sighs> there it is. This is from the year 2000. So none of these people know 9-11 is about to happen soon. So keep that in your mind at every moment. At Stan That's what I think about when I watch anything prior to 9-11 is no one in this movie knows about 9-11. Open up. We believe that the front of the refrigerator is a place of honor. <laughs> okay. Creepy. Oh no. I'm blanking on the name. Hold on. The, the the horror movie with the creepy children from the 50s. Uh, J John Carpenter remade it. Village of the Damned. Village of the Damned, kid! I forgot to make a joke because I was so busy thinking of the reference. I hope the reference is enough. That's a bad haircut, though. Holy shit. What kind of bowl did they have in their house? <laughs> I think even the bowl's embarrassed. <laughs> no, not Children of the Corn. You think I don't remember Children of the Corn? No, I'm thinking of the one where the eyes glow, and at the end, the guy keeps them from reading his mind by imagining a brick wall, and they all blow up. Spoilers. The movie's like 70 years old. It's fine. Oh, the tackiest house in the universe. My favorite destination. This is my favorite liminal space to get lost in. We Tacky. understand that sometimes a piece of paper just isn't big enough. We believe that there's more than one way to stamp a cat. Okay, in your advertising video, maybe don't allude to the skinning a cat idiom. There's a reason we don't use that idiom often anymore. It grosses people out. 
I think I'm seeing why this MLM isn't around anymore. Is LuLaRue still around? Did that end up closing? They still hobbling? The West fell when we stopped using wallpaper. I'm so glad we stopped using wallpaper. Wallpaper is disgusting. It's awful. What are you doing? That relationships are a work of art. And that everyone has a story to tell. At Stampin' Up, we believe in the artist inside everyone. Even me? Together we oh, they got a stamp song. Fuck yeah, stamp song. MLM still exists. They know you can go, you can buy, go to the store and buy stamps. To be clear, the issue is not stamps. Stamps are fine. Stamps are cute. Crafting is cute. I got nothing against against fucking crafts. I'm not that cynical. <laughs> My issue is MLMs are a scam. So you don't need to get involved in a scam and waste a bunch of money to go buy some rubber stamps. They sell them at every fucking craft store. There's a Michaels. There's a don't go to Hobby Lobby, but they probably have them if you want to shop at the shitty place. Walmart sells stamps. <laughs> Love what we do, making lasting impressions all year long. Stepping up. Stepping up. I never if MLMs were a good way to structure a business, every business would be that. The reason they don't is because it's scummy and scammy. Thought that I would be the artist in the family. But stamps and ink make easy art. I found a way to share my heart. There's a friend who needs some cheer. We've known each other all these years. I'll show her how much I care. I heard your, your, your mom passed away but i made you this card with some stamps i got from my mlm can i use this as an opportunity to recruit you because with my art i'm always there Stepping up. together we are happy to be making lasting impressions There's another song! This whole thing is at songs! This is 16 minutes long! I didn't know this was a musical MLM video, oh god! What have I done? KR Goss says, That's exactly how I learned my neighbor sold it! She sent me a card after my mom died with her business card. Classy as per usual for members of multi-level marketing schemes. <laughs> oh, someone's uh, family member or loved one died. I smell opportunity. What a wonderful feeling to express your best wishes, your thanks, your sympathy with a personalized card or gift you created by hand. Is it? I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm really not. Is it by hand if you use a stamp? Like, it's something. It's not nothing. Don't get me wrong. But so far, we saw people stamping, like, store-bought cards, it looked like. Like, if you just put a stamp on, like, a Hallmark card, is that homemade or is that more customized? I don't know if I'd count that as homemade. That's like saying me buying a frozen lasagna and putting extra cheese of my, like, choice on it is homemade. Not really. Every day in America, thousands of people do just that. 
thanks to the creative inspiration of Stampin' Up! Since 1988, this company has provided a selection of rubber stamps and accessories that allows anyone of almost any age to express their feelings with an artistic player. You could just sell them. You could just sell them to people. You could just say, we have these, and then you give us money, and then you get the thing. That's all you need to do! When Stampin' Up's founders, Shelley Gardner... And Semi-homemade. Yeah, like on Gordon Ramsay shows when they say something's fresh frozen. <laughs> LaVon Crosby. Everyone wants lasagna all the time, Phoenix. ...discovered the art of rubber stamping more than 10 years ago. They knew it was something they had to share with others. Growing up in Kanab, Utah, the two sisters had shared dolls, dreams, and other joys of childhood. As adults, the art of rubber stamping brought them... Good, they kept the tradition of creepy family photos alive. ...closer together and left its mark on their imagination. In an effort to share their enthusiasm with others, they began searching for a company that would allow them to demonstrate the art of stamping. But no single company offered everything they wanted. We finally realized we should start our own company, one that would offer a wide variety of stamps along with all- Oh yeah, that's a sincere affect. <laughs> 90s business person, oh boy. Oh. ...kinds of high quality accessories. We would teach the art of rubber stamping through fun in-home workshops led by talented demonstrators. These demonstrators would set their own goals depending on their own circumstances. And our program of special recognition would build both self-esteem and extra income for our demonstrators and their families. I don't get into business to build self-esteem. Is this a Richard Simmons video? What the fuck are you doing? To Is this enjoy. a business opportunity or a self-help book? You can't be both. Our company would promote the artistic talent of every individual and impact- True crime documentaries would be out of business in no time if there weren't creepy family photos and negative filters. Everything seemed normal until whoosh, Flash changed to negative version of family photo. The unspeakable happened. The unthinkable happened. Vest Steven, thanks for 200 bits. Impact lives and- And thank you for a 15 stream streak. In a positive way. The combined energy and enthusiasm of the two sisters made their dreams come true. You can tell they have a lot of energy because they dressed as cowgirls once. Over time, the company has experienced growth and change. After 10 years, Levon left the company to pursue her own interests. Now, more than a decade has passed since Stampin' Up! was founded what? in... You weren't, the stamps weren't good enough for you, Yvonne? Yvonne, what are you doing? Jelly's living room. And the business has exceeded those 90s vests, so oh boy. Exceeded expectations ever since. Stampin' Up! operates out of facilities in Kanab and Salt Lake City. The entire operation is Stampin one Up run by this one old man. Operates out of facilities in Nice mustache. In Kanab and Salt Lake City. Manufacturing its own line of exclusive rubber stamps. Gotta have an operation in Utah. Utah loves MLMs. Thousands of Americans have joined the company as demonstrators. I think if it wasn't for Mormonism, MLMs would not be nearly as big. I know that's not a hot take, but... Sharing their life. For those that don't know, Mormonism is really big into MLMs. It's an interesting thing. Love of stamping with tens of thousands of customers. And the ranks of Stampin' Up! enthusiasts just keeps growing. I believe our growth is due to the fact that we encourage people to enjoy themselves, to build friendships, and through- Is your growth because the entire nature of the scam requires recruitment? Kinda seems like it. This, we change people's lives. We do that one demonstrator and one customer at a time. Stampin' Up! offers everyone the opportunity to balance personal and career goals, to express their own unique creativity, and to love what they do. Oh my god, are they doing stomp with the stamps? Stamp. They're gonna make that joke, right? Wait, when was this? Year 2000. Stomp was a thing by the year 2000. You ever seen a stomp show? It's fine. Let's 
sec. Baja sent a link. Now that you're a young... <laughs> oh, you're catching very strong. Beautiful. Hmm. Where'd the stamp video go now? There it was. There are two reasons Stampin' Up! has become such a success story in such a short time. Number one is our family of demonstrators, whose enthusiasm for rubber stamping is absolutely contagious. And the second Juggle. reason for our success okay. is the quality and completeness of our exclusive product line. We offer everything you'll need to create a beautiful personalized card, gift, memory album, cabinet, or wall. Each year, our catalog showcases the full line of Stampin' Up! stamps, papers, cards, dual-tip pens, ink pads, and tools. New stamp sets are introduced throughout the year. Together with regular updates, the catalog becomes a virtual retail store, offering customers fresh new looks and great values. Each Stampin' Up! design is created exclusively for us by artists who understand the art of rubber stamping. Always monitoring popular design trends, our artists design thematically coordinated stamp sets. This unique feature makes it easy they were able to create to fill 16 minutes with this. a variety of looks with just one set of stamps. Each rubber stamp design is created from the highest quality rubber and packaged with hardwood maple blocks. As Stampin' Up! demonstrators place their customers' orders, our Salt Lake City Distribution Center swings into action. I want to know the story behind the people who made this generic background music. I'm obsessed with generic v VHS background music that you'd hear back in the day. That just, like, nonchalant guitar that... <laughs> going on in the background. Action. Packing up the shipments and distributing them within days. It's just a lot, you know? It feels like it's maybe almost like would be on a menu in Super Smash Brothers Melee or something. You know what I mean? It's just got a weird vibe. It's liminal. <laughs> it's uncanny. The sets are shipped unassembled so that each stamper may create a stamping instrument that suits their style. In addition to hundreds of rubber stamps for all occasions, there are four Stampin' Up! product lines that offer specific solutions for some popular applications. These product lines are Two-Step Stampin', a selection of fast, multicolored images that make an artist out of everyone. Stampin' Around Stamping Wheels, for creating decorative oh, backgrounds. Damn, they got the Stampin' Wheel! Wrapping paper and gift bags in a snap. There's the guitar again! It's a fucking ballad. Stamps that lend a truly professional touch to walls and textiles. And the Stampin' Memories line of high-quality scrapbooking supplies that make memory albums come alive. Every Stampin' Up! product is made of the highest quality materials to make your stamping experience an enjoyable one. Our affordable prices allow you to build a versatile collection of stamps and accessories without a major investment. And as your collection... There is a little bit of an investment, though. It's just not major. <laughs> grows. ...the opportunity for sharing handcrafted artistry with friends and family also grows. From holidays to family milestones, changing seasons to matters of the heart, Stampin' Up! products help customers create lasting impressions. tell you how to sell it to people? That's what I'm interested in. How do I monetize my friends? Because that's what friends are for, so I'm told. Some people find joy in raising a family. Some thrive on the excitement of a challenging career. Others delight in expressing their creative talents and sharing their gifts with others. Since 1988, Stampin' Up! has given thousands of Americans the opportunity to do all three at once. To 
today, thousands of demonstrators have joined Stampin' Up! Some join because they love the products and purchasing them at a discount. You're not purchasing them at the discount. That's the price. The other price that you get from, like, like people who are in the MLM is the jacked up price. They don't care if you sell them. They care if you buy them to sell them. It's not a discount. They're making money off you, you fools. You fools. Others join to earn a little extra spending. Sorry, the MLM thing just annoys me. My mom was into MLMs, and it's so frustrating to see someone fall for the same fucking scam over and over and over again. Money. And this some is personal. Make Stampin' Up! their full-fledged career. Whether full or part-time, just throwing all good money after can bad. Earn sales commissions, can qualify for bonuses, and even earn free vacations. The reasons for joining Stampin' Up! are as different as the individuals who make the decision, but all can experience the same rewards. The joy of creating a personalized work of art and giving it to a friend or loved one. The excitement of hearing appreciative oohs and ahs while demonstrating at a workshop. The pride that comes from having artwork accepted for the annual catalog. The thrill of being recognized by the company for achieving sales or recruiting goals. And the deep satisfaction that lingers after earning a much sought after promotion or award. No matter whether the reward is large or small, Stampin' Up! demonstrators find that each success boosts Every their Every outfit is more like late 90s, early 2000s than the last. Jesus. Our commitment to your success is genuine. We offer comprehensive training programs to help you get the most out of your stamps. Is this the first guy we've seen in the video? <laughs> Good for him. And your business. And once a year, Leadership Conference offers advanced manager level training aimed at sharpening oh business no, skills. Oh no, it's that spiral that conspiracy theorists means a thing. Teaching advanced stamp it doesn't. Being techniques. Nowhere is the celebration of achievement more evident than at Stampin' Up's annual convention. For most demonstrators, convention is the highlight of the year. It provides them with the opportunity to form new relationships and get reacquainted with old friends. It's a place to enhance business skills through in-depth training sessions and to celebrate achievements with a sales family that stretches from coast to coast. Our mission at Stampin' Up! is to promote creative, fun pursuits and activities that impact lives in a positive way. We see that happen each and every day through our family of demonstrators. What an honor it has been to be part of their Have lives. Have I seen the MLL episode of Penn & Teller's Bullshit? Let's see, third season, eighth season. First season, I think. Yep, first season, which I have two copies of. Second season, seventh season, sixth season, fifth season, fourth season. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, I like... Penn um, was a libertarian at this time, so there's definitely takes that are aged terribly, but I do like the show broadly. <sighs> there's a DVD for that. There always is in my collection. Need to put those in order. I know, I don't know. They've just been sitting over on a table over there with some books because I need to find a place for them. I'm out of shelf space. I got to get a new shelf at some point or something. I have one outside that I'm working on restoring, but I haven't worked on since uh, last fall, so I need to get back into that now that it's warmed up. And what a joy it will be to share the Stampin' Up! opportunity with others in the future. There's not a Hannah DVD. Not yet!
It's a precious memory of treasure through the If I retire in like 50 years and I'm still alive, if anyone wants to do something really nice for me, use some sort of future computer program to download all of my videos that are available and put them on a Blu-ray set. I don't care how difficult that is in the future. Do it, and I'll be very happy. Gift it to me for my retirement. It'll be the fulfillment of all of my work. <laughs> oh. Thanks to a friend for sharing laughter with the tears. A special gift to show you feeling there inside. Or just best of. It's the best of Hannah. Of That's feasible. Love and your <laughs> life. So in our own way we like three hour streams heart. most days so that's a lot of that's a lot of space <laughs> for the fabric of families this country's heart oh, cookies that sound great celebrate our step on America celebrate another song so that's good for whoever wanted another song Stand on America. whoever the fuck that <laughs> al-qaeda is about to stamp on america if you know what i mean it's been 23 years i can make that joke don't make me pull up femboy 9-11 Just love what you do and share what you Oh, love. he's so enchanted by this fish card. Oh. I would be too. John, hope your meeting is a success. I'll miss you while you're gone. Love, Kathy. And then there's little, I assume that's like a fishing bag? Question mark? I don't know. Oh. Nice personal Celebrate note. Celebrate our step on America. Stamp it. Oh my god, that had the heart null. Did you notice that? I know that not every outhouse with a heart on it is the heart null, but it looks like it to me, and that's where my brain goes. The professor's everywhere. It's true. Impressed Americans aren't tricked into scams by repeatedly saying America. They are all the time. What do you mean? That's basically how Trump became the president. <laughs> all right, we're, 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 okay, go, you're overusing the hook. You're overusing the hook. We get it. Kissed while listening to the MLM stamp ballad. Woo! <laughs> Fuck, now I gotta pull up that mower video for their song. This is one that was for a, a mower safety instructional video, did one as well? There you are, look at you. Always wear appropriate protective clothing, long pants, sensible <laughs> shoes. Doing everything you do. Store gasoline in approved container. Never fill tank indoors. Knowing how to see it through. Never operate this vehicle while taking drugs, medication, or alcohol. Never. Staying awake to the world around. Wait, why would Cloverfield be a weird date movie? Cloverfield's fucking awesome. You Maybe that's just me. If, if like, I wouldn't want to go on a date with someone who wouldn't want to watch Cloverfield. Does that make sense? It's a good litmus test. <laughs> Is that wrong? I don't know. Staying alert. 
was not me. I'm married, so it worked. <laughs> to the life you share. Every move with your eyes. Always keep your attention on your machine. Do not be distracted from your work. The parade path. My dad used to just get drunk and smoke weed and then mow the lawn. Passing by. Is he not supposed to do that? I Always watch out for traffic when crossing or moving near roadways. Like a light in the sky. Always oh wow, use he's got a fucking roller too. That's unnecessary. Machine and its attachments in well lit conditions. Staying awake to the world around you. Staying alert to the life you share. Why are all these people mowing the lawn in dress in clothes? Country, simple. All of these people are wearing like khaki shorts or khaki pants. What are you doing? Human I've neck. never seen someone mow the lawn in this attire. They're always in, you know, the shittiest clothes they have. Because <laughs> they're like, you know, work clothes outside. Not faulty machine design. Not bad luck. Simple human negligence. Don't travel hundreds of miles on your lawnmower. It makes bad movies. We're not talking anymore screaming at the radio. How dare you? This causes thousands of incidences of bodily injury. And it's a curious fact that all these injuries could be avoided through a state of being You just don't understand. Called operator awareness. Being constantly aware of your physical self while on or around the machine. Being aware of the machine itself as well as its various attachments. I think Disney owns that now. Are they going to re-release that? Probably not. And finally, being vigilantly aware of the world around you as you operate the machine. Every new machine comes with a safety manual. If you bought yours secondhand or if the manual is simply lost, contact your local dealer for a replacement. Make like they're going to give you the VHS tape but not the manual? That's weird. Make it a requirement that anyone who operates your machine reads it. If you should sell your machine, pass on the manual and this video to the next owner. Because there may be typical human beings and typical suburban lawns. There may even be typical riding mowers. But before anyone turns the starter on one of these wonderfully convenient machines, they should pause a moment to remember there is no such thing as a typical situation. Be aware out there. There you are, look at you. Don't you make a most amazing sight? Doing everything you do. Always taking time to do it right Knowing how to see it through Look at you, bright as any light Staying awake to the world around you Staying alert to the light What was that called? Was it the long, long story? Slow, what the fuck, the one with the mower. Why am I blanking now? It's driving me nuts now that it got brought up. No. What the fuck? The straight story, right? Wait, the straight story? Yes! The straight story, I remember. This morning you fall and you can't get off the floor. That's your hips, Alvin. And you're going to have to use a walker now to get around. No walker. I love a lightning storm. Me too, Dad. A cloud. I had a... a stroke. Rose, darling, I'm gonna go back on the road, and I, I've got to make this trip on my own. Basically, it's about a guy that travels across the country on his riding lawnmower because his brother's dying, and he wants to go see him before he dies. And he can't drive a car, and he can't walk, so he decides to drive his lawnmower. I go see Lyle. David Lynch film. It's very slow. It's incredibly slow. Cool. Right off the right off the road. It's, Mount Zion, Wisconsin. It's mostly just him driving around and, and stuff happening. Trip. 
And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking like, oh, like he'll meet a lot of interesting people along the way. He'll meet people and stuff will happen, but it's not like a wacky road trip movie. It's more just a... It's a rumination on quiet and slowness and... I don't know. Maybe check it out. Or don't. Do whatever. It's your life. <laughs> oh, here's a workout clip from a workout video that's supposed to be a comedy workout? Amy Sharkbee says, Hey Hannah, you and chat should do this. It's a 90s sitcom where the uncle dies and leaves the family a chest with a surprise inside. The show is called What a Dummy. Uh, thank you. I think I actually looked into this. I haven't watched it though. <laughs> thank you. I'll take a look at it later. Um, and Freyline with a link. Pringles and Crocs dropped the limited edition shoe collection. And yes, there are a lot of mustaches involved. It's just a crummy ad. Eh. I feel like Crocs as a meme shoe peaked in 2010. Pringles are okay. Just finished my 20 minute cardio. It's the normalist Lynch movie. I don't disagree. It's. It's not my favorite Lynch film. Let's put it that way. But it's notable. Vascular walk in 19 minutes. I know what you think. Why did I ever buy a workout tape by a comedian? I'd rather have an affair with a moose. If you go down to the beach and you're wearing a one-piece bathing suit and you bend over and it turns into a two-piece bathing suit, or you're embarrassed to go to the beach and, 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 and you know, topless and you're a man, or if you look in the mirror and your clothes look terribly wrinkled and then you realize you're naked, if you have new shoes and you can't see them, or if you're walking down the street and you think someone's passing you and it's you, you're going to feel and look younger and you're going to hit the lottery. Like, if you don't have a friend, maybe it's because of the way you look. Put a hundred dollar bill on your forehead and go through a bad neighborhood. Run this tape backwards and do the exercise backwards. Get an image of what you want to look like. If you have trouble with that start button, it'll show you what terrible shape you're really This guy has a very Tuvok disposition. You just, hmm, here for this comedy. Humans and their comedy exercise videos. Oh, yeah. Really illogical. It's also good for prayers if you're in India or anywhere in Asia. In the Middle East. I hate this. I'd rather put in a bra up my nose and open it. This is good also, you know, if you want to listen to your shoulders, you rarely get an opportunity to hear what they say. If you don't like your neighbor, you do this. Oh, man. I told you to hold it firmly. It's a great exercise for you ladies. You don't have to buy any uh, padded shoulders. Exactly. Thank you, David. <laughs> I didn't want to think of the wrong idea. Be careful placing your weights down, too. Especially if you have a cat. It's like your women are hugging someone. I hate this second only to eating liver. Sorry, Mr. Bernstein. And you can lean on anything, any piece of furniture or the head of a neighbor's child. This was first thought of this exercise of the Inquisition in Spain. If God meant us to bend this way, he would have put hinges on our stomach. You can't see your knee when you do this. You gotta work on your stomach. <laughs> you can't see I hope my joke can age this badly. Truly, for the circle of life to be complete, I think someday on the hyper internet where everyone's brains are connected, someone has to do some sort of hyper stream where they're making fun of old streamers and they make fun of my bad jokes. Otherwise, what do we do in this for? Am I doing a 420 stream this year? Let me see what date it is. Um, probably. 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 Here's a, another MLM. Mary Kay Makeup. For all I know, this might actually go, get, give decent skincare tips, but the aesthetic of this video I'm obsessed with. It's like hyper 90s in a very particular way that you'll get. It's got some of that pastel 90s shit going on. <laughs> 90s upper middle class pastels, if you know what I mean. You'll know when you see it. <laughs> I'd say our young artist is a Mary Kay customer in the making, wouldn't you? Don't sell your children terrible makeup. 
Or maybe even a future beauty consultant. Which means she has a wonderful career ahead of her. Her hair is gorgeous, though. And so do you. And one of the real keys to success in our business is knowing how to conduct a skincare class that's effective and fun. Is this what the is one my mom was into? It was the main one my mom was into. But she was into many others. She was into Mary Kay makeup pretty consistently my whole life. She did the sex, one of those sex toy ones, one of the candle ones. There might have been an oil one thrown in there. She was interested in Lou LaRue, but I don't think she ever actually got into that one. What does it take? Well, product knowledge on your part. And you find most everything you need to know right here. Plus some tried and true techniques that work for top Mary Kay directors and consultants. <laughs> and someone to host a class. Someone like Dana Abernathy, you know, who hosted nervous. the class I held just this morning. I'm feeling better about it now. <laughs> well, I have a great hostess gift waiting for you. I will say this. One of the bright sides of not having contact with my mom at this point in my life is she's not trying to shill Mary Kay makeup to me now that I'm out as a trans woman. <laughs> Which, if I was still at a relationship with her, I'm almost certain would happen. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Did you have any trouble finding the place? Uh, no, your directions were perfect. I drove right here. Oh, good. Such a lovely home. Well, thanks. You know, I can't believe my sister-in-law is actually coming because she's real happy with the makeup she already uses. I'm not real sure how receptive she's going to be to something new. Well, look, I'm just glad to get the chance to get acquainted with her. Okay. Oh, by the way, Dana, which your of your... cousin-in-law has one of those pink Cadillacs from Mary Kay. Oh, the thing on those is ridiculous, too. It's not a car that you get to keep. It's a company lease, and if you drop below, like, the same, like, really high sales figures, you get it taken away immediately. It's, like, ridiculous. Your guests coming today might be interested in doing what I do. Um, you know, I'm not sure. Let me give it some thought. Jennifer, honey, come get your sneakers. <laughs> that looks exactly like my house. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me just a second. Oh, sure. Well, hello there. Let's see. You must be Jennifer, and I bet you're Julie, right? I'm seven years old, and Julie's nine years old. She'll be ten in the summer. Really? Are you Mary Kay? <laughs> no, honey. I'm Claire McDaniel. But look. This is Mary Kay. She's the one who started our company. She's pretty. Mm -hmm. My mommy has some of this. I know. Claire, I hope this doesn't throw you, but that was Natalie Hamilton on the phone, and she'll be bringing her niece with her this morning. Um, I met Nikki several times before she went to college, and I really like her. That's great. The more the merrier. Okay. Can we help you get some of this? <laughs> Central uh, casting. Send over fa a family. We'll send some rejects from Full House. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you wouldn't mind carrying that in. Girls, Girls you want to help? Yeah. Kids, right. telephones, yeah. unexpected and guests, secret. even last-minute cancellations. It happens to all of us, so just don't let it throw you. The secret is to be organized and stay in control. I mean, to these kids, it's just another acting job. I, I've don't managed know what to pre-profile all of Dana's guests, even her sister-in-law, who didn't confirm until the last minute. To the little Visa Mastercard thing. And that's really important, because it tells you what to expect and lets you tailor your class to individual needs. Claire? Oh, this is Natalie Hamilton. Hi, Hi Natalie. Known me since she and my mom started teaching, I don't know how many years oh, ago. Dan, don't say that. You make me feel old. Oh, <laughs> I'm just going to give it up. Honestly, it's good that in this day and age with, like, YouTube and stuff, if you wanted a tutorial on, like, what's good skin care for my type of skin, or how do I figure out what kind of skin I have in terms of, like, you know, is it combination, is it dry, is it oily, whatever. Like, what are different skin care routines? You don't have to go to some scammy MLM pitch to get it. You can go on YouTube. That's nice. That's good all the way here. And her niece, Nikki, who's home from college oh, for the nice summer, nice studying honey. architecture. Yeah, you have a good memory. <laughs> oh, Claire, that must be your guest. Cheryl would have let herself in. Great. Uh, ladies, uh, Natalie, you're all set up right Again, here. Again, okay. the 90s best. Would you like to sit right next to your aunt here? Okay. And if you don't mind, I have a skincare profile. Can we bring the best I asked Nikki to fill out a skincare profile before we got started. Just fill in your name. And, and then it was time for me to make exactly introductions. Oh, Grace, I'm glad you could make it. Everybody, this is Grace Tovar. Hi, she hi. came to a class I held the other evening. Her last name is Tovar? <laughs> Sounds like a yeah. fantasy monster. 
Tovar, devourer of worlds. I invited her today to give us a report. Ooh. And I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Thanks. And I want to thank you and Dana both for including me. Oh, the directions. Great. I got here in no time. Good. <laughs> really nice. Thank you. What's the overlap between MLM vulnerability and the need to appear in control at all times, especially in social situations? Oh my god, I feel like I'm getting pelted with an SAT question. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Overlap between MLM vulnerability and the need to appear in control at all times. I think it would be inverse, if anything, because I feel like if you are in an MLM pitch, if you fall for it, either you trust this person or you're being socially pressured. So it's not so much I wouldn't think about control as it is acquiescence to social pressure, um, which is its own problem, but I, I don't know. You. Okay, well, you're all set up. Grace? In control comment sounded targeted at someone's insecurity. Um, that could certainly be a part of it, especially for beauty MLMs. So I have you over okay, here. Okay, right over here. And Dana, you're right here. Okay. Across from Natalie. Right. Cicero Fields, thanks for a five-stream streak. Hi, Grace. Uh, look, why don't we spend a few minutes getting acquainted while we wait for Cheryl? Oh, okay. oh well, knowing my sister-in-law, that could be all day. <laughs> <laughs> she has a habit of running kind of late. Right. I vote we get started. I've got to work this afternoon, so I second the motion. Well, let me begin by saying thank you to each of you for taking part of your Saturday to be here. Oh. And I definitely think you're going to find it worth your while. And as a special thank you to Dana, I'd like to give her this lipstick case for being such a gracious hostess. <laughs> oh, I sure can use this, and I know exactly which Mary Kay shade to put in here. <laughs> now. About being your own boss? Oh, like from that angle. I hadn't even thought about that. This is one of the reasons that there's a, a big um, part of this in like uh, Mormon communities because especially in social situations or communities where women don't have as much agency, like in conservative religious groups like Mormonism, um, it's one of the only things that they can do that's considered a job because it works inside the house and you have your own hours. It's not really a job. You're a contractor. Not even really. You're basically just buying shit from them to resell. Um, so it's its own thing. But I could see that. Trying to have some sort of agency to be your own boss, to make your own money, um, it plays into that fantasy for sure. Come on, Dana, tell us how you really feel, okay? <laughs> if Mary Kay could bottle her vitality, you'd have a customer for life. Well, in a way, Natalie, we have, by creating products that help you look your best. Now, haven't you noticed that when you like the way you look, you feel like you can take on the whole world? Well, that's how I got this great summer job. I mean, I wanted it so badly. So the day of my interview... Did Mary Kay makeup even have decent, like, darker shades in 1990? I only thought it was in more recent years. I thought there was, like a scandal for Mary Kay because their beauty products were very white-centered, if that makes sense. I put on my favorite outfit, I did my face, you know, in the fairness, work. that's the problem that, you know, pervades the beauty industry in general. But I just find it interesting that two of the women in this video aren't white when my view of 90s and early 2000s Mary Kay is very white. And I just really felt confident, and I got it. Well, good for you. Nikki, why don't you tell us about yourself, and then we'll just go around the table. Well, uh, I'm a summer intern with this really great architectural firm, and that's what I'm studying at school. So even though I'm just a glorified gopher for right now, you know, like delivering blueprints, filing, you know, stuff like that, it's a really good opportunity. I haven't altered on dying. I haven't. Um, creepy doll on the wall. Thanks for 33 months. Is am I a mason now? You are. You are the highest level uh, Freemason. Hannah chapter. Congrats. That's what we all want, isn't it? My married. The earth is shaped like a carrot, by the way. That's the secret you learn at the 33rd level. Don't tell anyone. Everyone else pretend you didn't hear that. You didn't earn it. K career has just been one exciting opportunity after another. Natalie, what about you? Well, not only do I have a beautiful and talented niece. <laughs> I also keep up with about 900 other children. What? what you... <laughs> Not mine, of course, but I think of them as mine. I'm a principal at Johnson Elementary, which is where I met Dana's mother back when she was a school librarian, and I just started teaching. Well, what about you, Grace? Do you have any children? Our household revolves around a cat named Tinker and a bulldog named General Pat. <laughs> My husband is retired military, so you know where that came oh. from. Oh. Anyway, we moved here about three years ago, and I've been working part-time at the Chamber of Commerce for, well, about the last year. 
See, I want Grace to host a class so I can meet General Patton. But we'll talk about that later, Grace. Hello, <laughs> player. Thanks for a Okay, Dan. It's your turn. Oh, okay. Let's see. Um, well, I'm the mother of two girls who were told to entertain themselves in their room while Mommy got beautiful. <laughs> and that won't last long, I assure you. Uh, and Joe, being the loving husband and son-in-law that he is, took my father fishing. That's my brother, all right. What a guy. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, everyone. It's just been one of those mornings. It's okay. <laughs> you must be Cheryl. Yeah. I'm Claire McDaniel. Hi. Nice to have you. Nice to uh, you. This is Grace Tovar. Hi. Natalie Hamilton. Hi. And her niece, Nikki. Hi. Hi. Now, we've all just spent the last few minutes getting acquainted, so actually, Cheryl, you're just in time. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why don't you have a seat, and then tell us about yourself, please. Um, okay. Well, I'm Cheryl Abernathy, and I'm an administrative assistant at an advertising agency downtown. Uh, I like to play tennis and swim, and that's about it. Well, um, let me tell you about myself. Um, for a number of years, I had my own catering business. And then, you know, one day it finally dawned on me that here I was working, and everybody else was out there having fun. <laughs> <laughs> what a strange hypothetical. I had a successful business, so I decided to throw that away to enter a scam. <laughs> <laughs> About that time, one of my clients introduced me to Mary Kay products at a class just like this one. In practically no time, I started noticing how much better my skin looked. I mean, even my friends noticed a difference, too. And so I hosted a class for them. And that became a springboard to a whole new career, just as this class might be for you. One of the biggest challenges for a new consultant is how to keep a class moving and interesting at the same time. I'm going to pass along some advice my director gave me. You want your guests to have a good time, but remember, you're not there to entertain them. You're there to educate them about skin care. And, the... and by educate, we mean get them to give you money and ideally start selling for you. Wonderful benefits of using Mary Kay. Mary Kay offers each of you two complimentary facials, one now and then the second within a few weeks, just to make sure that you're using the products correctly. And the second one's to pressure you into joining if you didn't in the first one. It's not to make sure you're using the products correctly. They don't give a shit. <laughs> you're getting the desired <laughs> results. Grace, now after using the product samples that I gave you the other day, what have you noticed about your skin? Well, Mainly that it just looks and feels softer than it has in years. Hmm. And as dry and sensitive as my skin is, that is really something. I mean, it, it's... <laughs> now, that's the kind of report I'm I like. Just imagining what you would say if, if they're like, ah, I did, and maybe they'll go over it in this video. It's supposed to be an instructional video for the, the people in the MLM. If they go like, I don't know, I haven't really noticed a difference. Or if they're like, it looks worse. What are you supposed to do? Probably assume, act like it's their fault. Maybe you didn't use it correctly. <laughs> Like to get. I'm trying to think what's the sinister MLM way to, to explain that. <laughs> I always thought that dry skin was prone to wrinkles, but seeing Grace has changed my mind. Thanks, Natalie. I really have liked the way my skin has looked the last few days. Grace is learning that Mary Kay skincare products help to soften lines and make them less apparent. Now, Dana, you've been a regular Mary Kay user for some time now. Mm -hmm. Are you still happy with the program? Are you kidding? You know, I didn't think I'd ever find anything to control the oil on my face until I met Claire and started <laughs> using Mary Kay products. Mm. Well, Mary Kay believes that beauty comes in all ages and all colors. So we have products for every skin type, from the youngest to the oldest and the fairest to the darkest. Plus, we let you try before you buy and teach you how to use our products correctly, which very few department stores do. Mm. But look, as I told you over the phone, you know, department stores where you buy all your makeup because it's 1990. When we talked about and you go to the mall to buy makeup. Your skin, there's no obligation. So I hope you just relax and let's have a good time, huh? Okay. Well, yeah. I've gotten department store makeovers lots of times without buying a thing. Well, my girlfriends and I have too. I mean, you walk out of the store looking great, but you don't know how to do it yourself. Well, after today, you will. Mary Kay doesn't just promise beauty, we teach it. As a professional Mary Kay consultant, I've been through... Again, YouTube tutorials undercutting so much of the sales pitch behind the Mary Kay thing. ...be trained in skincare. And this morning, I'm going to show you some basic skincare techniques that you can practice right now by giving yourself a facial. And then you'll be able to do it yourself at home. Now, doesn't that sound like a sensible plan? You're talking to someone who definitely believes in hands-on training. I also a want to introduce to say. you to our Color Logic Glamour system and show you how to achieve a basic color coordinated look. Now, Dana's in for a special treat today. I want to see if they sign up by the end. 
<laughs> well, here's how you can get the sunscreen products and the glass. All right. Oh, wow, they are going to separate Jumps. them one by one to prey on them. Change the color. Why don't you try Dana's Choice today, okay? Using today, or one of these. 75? More than that. Keep adding. <laughs> I think we all agree we're not there yet. Natalie, now tell me, how many times in the last 12 months have you worn that special outfit? I haven't worn that dress in nearly two years. <laughs> Cheryl, how about you? I've worn it maybe twice. Dana? I'm assuming she said, like, when's the last time you bought a nice dress? How often have you worn it? For the same price, I can get you your starter kit. Grace? Are you kidding? All I wear these days are mommy clothes. Well, it's what I had planned to wear to dinner this evening, but it has been a long time. Now, what's more important? Investing in something that you only wear once in a while? Or in something that makes you feel good about yourself every day? Now, the first big decision that I had to make involving Mary Kay is the same one that you face right now. How much to invest in... But you should feel good about what's on the inside, I say hypocritically as I have a, a tube of $40... uh $40 uh, a foundation on my face. ...future of my skin. Or it lasts quite a while, don't get me wrong, but it's expensive. Or whether to invest anything at all. Now, I can guess what's going through your mind, and believe me, I want to help you any way that I can. But first... You have to tell me what it is that you want. So let's take a few minutes to visit one-on-one. -on -one, and this will give everyone a chance to look over the product displays, too. Well, and if you're like me, you're ready for coffee and pound cake, and I've got plenty of that it. Sounds good. <laughs> I've also asked Dana to show you some of our other products, too. So please, just feel free to browse. Cheryl, wait till you see the nail colors in warm and cool shades. Mm, we've got something great for you. Claire, uh -huh. I just wanted to ask you about the moisturizer. Oh. I always try to close with my most promising guests first. I mean, sometimes their enthusiasm can influence the others. And Ew. it certainly doesn't hurt your confidence to have that first close. Peer pressure, peer pressure. Let's go well. I really had a good feeling about Grace. She'd been to a previous class, but was hesitant at first because of her sensitive skin. But she liked the samples I gave her, and then she liked me enough to schedule a second facial. You want to close where you feel most comfortable. Now, some consultants move to another room, but I kind of like to stay at the table. With other guests waiting, you want to finish as quickly as possible, but not before you ask for the sale. So tell me how you liked today's class, Grace. I loved it. And I think the fact that I had the chance to sample the products beforehand mm -hmm. is what made all the difference in the world. Oh, I'm glad. No, I, I knew I wasn't sensitive to anything, so I just relaxed. I just had a good time. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> well, now that you've tried the line several times and you know about the extensive testing that our products have undergone to back our safer sensitive skin claim, what do you think about just starting with the complete collection? Oh, no, I think I better just start with the basic set, Claire. But during class, she really seemed interested in the moisture renewal treatment. She's not even saying no. She's just saying, I just want the normal one. I hate high-pressure sales tactics. I hate this shit. Yeah. And our Actually, would you spend more money even though you just told me you didn't want to? How do you not feel disgusting? How do you not feel gross? Cream concentrate. Well, but do you think I would need them both? Well, let me show you something. Now look. Why would you ask her? She's literally trying to sell you something. What do you think she's going to say? No, you only need one. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the moisture renewal treatment cream, which you tried on the back of your hand, remember? Right. Okay. Now, that renews the skin's ability to retain moisture for the face and the... DM Trey says, allow me to isolate each of you and pick you off one by one. This is called the Jason method. <laughs> Throat area. Our eye cream concentrate moisturizes, protects, and soothes the puffiness-prone eye area. Well... I uh, hope Savini did effects for this. No, Claire. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Now, if money were no object and you could just have whatever you want... I could well, never do sales. It's gross. Would it be? Hmm. Money, no object. Mm -hmm. Well, then I'd definitely take the basic skincare. Mm -hmm. I would take these two supplements and the sunscreens. I'm really interested in those because I'm on the golf course a lot. Oh, you need some protection yes, then. Yes, I do. What about the Glamour products? You really seem to like your lip color and complimentary blush. Oh, you're right, Claire, I do. <laughs> well, here's how you can get the sunscreen products mm -hmm. and the Glamour products that you really want for less money. How? Book a class. Really? Yeah. Invite a few neighbors, some people from work, and that way you can earn the extras with hostess credit. I would Ew. like to do that. That'd be fun.
Oh, you like all this extra stuff? Join my creepy sales cult. Okay, well... I'll make a percentage of all your sales, and you can recruit more people, and they can recruit more people. <laughs> Evil laugh. Can would we you... book it right yeah. now? Would you be able to come, though? Would you be... Well, of course, okay. I would be right there. All right, how about... Um... I've already got Grace scheduled. Two weeks from today. But not every guest is that eager, nor is every close that easy. Remember Cheryl from my class this morning, who came as a favor to Dana? Now, she was definitely a challenge. But I don't think it's constructive to save a difficult guest till last. So, I sat down with Cheryl next. Well, I've been using Clinique for so long, I, I just don't see any reason to change. <laughs> well, look, Cheryl, I know how busy you are with your job and all your other interests. I bet that doesn't leave you much time Your here. job and all your other interests. I paid a lot of attention to you, clearly. I'm so detailed about the specifics of your life. I know you're busy with insert human activity here. But have you considered buying more shit? Yourself, does it? No, not a lot. You know, saving time is one of the services that I offer. If you run out of something or if you want to place an order, I'm right here. And I'll even deliver it to your office. I mean, honestly, my clients are that important to me. Well, just last week, I stocked up on everything I was out of, so I'm really going to have to pass. Well, that's up to you. Now, let's see. You've got your glamour samples, mm -hmm. and I've got something else. I want you to take a few skincare samples, too. Just try them for a few days and compare them with what you use right now. And then I'll call yeah, you. Yeah, I'm in definitely week. using skincare products right now, like a responsible person. And ask her what you think. It's a joke, I am. Okay. All right. And it was really nice meeting Would you. recommend. Even just basic stuff, moisturizer. Would recommend. Oh, you too, fair. Maybe I could offer Cheryl a free glamour item for every pound of old makeup she brings me. Estrogen helps too. If you can get your hands on some estrogen, that'll help your skin a lot. You know, some prospects just never come around. That's my number one beauty tip. Estrogen! <laughs> but Cheryl's skincare profile told me that she needed more guidance than she was getting with her other products. And I knew that I could provide it if she'd just give Maybe me half a chance. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's multiple letters from therapists she had to send to an endocrinologist. Mm -hmm. So what did you think of your first Mary Kay facial? Oh, it was definitely an education. Your products are more sophisticated than I realized. They sure are. How does your face feel? Well, it doesn't have that heavy feeling like you get with a lot of makeup. I feel like I'm not wearing any at all. Well, good. Tell me what you want to take home today, and then let's schedule your second facial. Okay. Excuse me. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's okay. But I have to leave, and, well, I decided to get the toffee lipstick. Oh, it's great. You'll love it. It looks so good on you, Cheryl. Yeah. I've got some right here. Now, toffee, right? Mm-hmm. And Dana already told me how much it was. I mean, <laughs> She knows the price list by heart. She... I, you know, I, I, I can't, uh, I can't force it, Jenner. <laughs> Would. <laughs> I've got a sack. You can just put everything in with your samples. Okay. And thanks for the samples. You bet. Now, I'll call you this week and we'll talk, okay? Okay. It was really nice meeting you. All right. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Bye, Bye now. Sorry, believe me. <laughs> I was thrilled. I mean, it was a small step, but hey, we're headed in the right direction. Well, what I'd like to do is get the cleanser and the moisturizer and maybe add the rest later on. Well, you know, Natalie, to tell you the truth, I think I'd rather see you wait than split up the basic set. Remember, as I said in class, our products are formulated to work together. And I'm afraid if you don't use them that way, you're just not going to be satisfied with the results. Fuck off! What a ridiculous thing to say. Actually, you need to use all our products? Wow, that makes them useless individually. I guess I won't buy any then. Thanks. It's like Apple, you have a closed makeup ecosystem. Go fuck yourself. If I want to use my Tarte foundation with um e.l.f. concealer, and you're telling me not to do that, I'm not going to buy your product. Go fuck yourself. Results. Love that joker. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. Why don't I just get the basic set? That's I why you need all the products. You're going to really love your decisions. Makes sense. By the time we'd finished, I'd convinced Natalie to turn her second facial into a skincare class by inviting some of her teacher friends. And she loved the idea of earning a personalized beauty analysis like Dana had. And she was almost certain that Nikki would want one too. Hostess credit is a great incentive. But remember, you want to keep it simple and flexible. Whether it's a percentage system or gift items or products, which was Dana's goal. 
When we added everything up, she had around $30 in credit. Enough to cover several of the products from her personalized beauty analysis. Dana, look at the hostess credit you're going to have to work with today. That much? Yes. Well, then I can get some of the sun essentials for the girls, too. <laughs> Dana, I love your enthusiasm. You've heard me say more than once that there's a new consultant in every class. Mm -hmm. You know what? I really see that potential in you. Well, you know, Claire, I have given it a lot of thought. We certainly could use the extra money. And the vast majority of people in multi-level marketing schemes, like Mary Kay Makeup, lose money. The vast majority lose money. Those that do make money, most of them make below minimum wage. Do not, under any circumstances, join a pyramid scheme, a multi-level marketing scheme, um, network marketing, social marketing, network sales. These are scams. You are the customer for these. Do not take these jobs. They will ruin your life. They aren't jobs. They're grifts, in my opinion. Now that both girls are in school, I do have the time. <laughs> and the customers. Oh? Look, there's Natalie, Nikki, and maybe even Cheryl. <laughs> and you can get started with the class that Natalie booked. Do you really think I can do it? Dana, I know you can. You're going to be great. And you better, because you're on my downline. So if you don't make your goals, I don't make my goals. And that's going to be a you problem, isn't it? I can bring you to our next unit meeting Monday night. Okay. All right? Yeah. Congratulations. We'll see you. Cool. <laughs> Every time I give a skincare class, I'm reminded of all the things I love about Mary Kay. The fellowship, the fun, the challenge, the business potential, the opportunities, and the rewards. I wish you every success as you pursue your Mary Kay career. Hate you. <laughs> that was interesting. Cool. Oh, this is interesting. This I'm excited. Uh, I don't know how many people remember VCR games. So, back in the 80s and 90s, there were uh, board games that came with VHS tapes. So you'd be doing board game or card game stuff, and then there'd be places where you'd pause the gameplay, and then you'd play portions of a video. All sorts of different themes they did of this. This one is based on Isaac Asimov's works, which looks so interesting. I do not have any of the game elements. The person who posted this said they were working on making PDF scans of the game cards and stuff, which would have been great. It would have been so fun if we could have played this together. But they never did that, and they crossed out saying they were going to. So I'm assuming that didn't end up happening. So we're going to watch this. I, I don't know what we're going to be missing from the gameplay part, but it will have all the video parts. So that should be fun. Isaac Asimov, for those who don't know, is one of the you know founding fathers of science fiction. Um, he created, if you ever heard, like the uh, Laws of Robotics, I think that was him, Asimov was. Am I wrong? Captain Squid says, wait, 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 I looked it up. I had this game. Oh, fun. This should be nostalgic for you, then. Three laws of robotics. Okay, he did that. A crime is about to be committed. It is up to you to pay attention to everything that happens and catch the criminal. Good luck. Earth. The birthplace of man. It's hard to believe that we once lived unprotected on its surface. Turn it up a little. I think it's a little quiet. Exposed like animals. Fortunately, we had the good sense to abandon our cities on the surface and move underground. Now we're safe. But there were some who took a different path to find new homes out there in the stars. Their descendants now live on the spacer planets, spoiled, self centered, and wasteful without disease, free to pursue science and art, their every wish fulfilled, and all because of the robots who serve them. Thousands of robots, smart, strong, obedient, 
robots who build more robots till they outnumber the spacers a hundredfold. Ro the robots in this are incredible, by the way. Robots who wait on them, who serve them, even pilot their ships. Well, we have robots too, but mostly where people won't go. Topside, tending crops. But our little tin men are minor league compared to the spacer robots. And that means the spacers call the shots. Is that a 3D model of the Earth? I'm trying. It was 86. There's no way that for this board game they had a 3D model of the globe rendered in a computer, right? 86. That would have been expensive for this. So now they've set up a base out in old New. Could have been a model, I guess. It might have been a model that was just shot in a way that looks tilt shifted and shots. weird. So now they've set up a base out in old New Jersey. This is a model for Here sure. To help us. Space Wait, no, that might be 3D too. Okay, I think they're doing like really I early 3D graphics. This is really for, but I'll tell you this. No, 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 that's a model. Kelvin Amadiro didn't come. Sorry, how blurred this is is making it difficult to determine for me. Here to help the Earth. And his honor the mayor warned that these census figures will mean even smaller food allotments for the months to come. In other news, the arrival earlier this week of spacer Keldon Amadiro is regarded ominously by local authorities. Well known for his anti-Earth views, Amadiro was sent directly from Aurora to head up the Spacertown base. Let's see what this says. Um, birthplace Aurora, profession bureaucrat, head of space political delegation to Earth, he has authority over Fast Ulf, chairman of the Spacer Committee to Isolate Earth, um, gave up stalled career as a scientist in order to become an administrator. He was met by Dr. Han Fastoff, the galaxy's leading roboticist, who has been at Spacertown for several months now. Fa uh, he's also born in Aurora, profession roboticist, educated at the Auto Ran Academy, currently head of the Robotics Institute, holder of 3,588 intergalactic patents. Fastoff has often been at odds with Amadiro. The Chiron is covering the bottom parts of these. I think they fucked up. I didn't think they expected the Chiron to be on this graphic. Whoops. Over Earth space of policy issues. Ever since his arrival, Amadiro has been unavailable to News 99 for comment on his appointment to the Spacertown base. In other news, riots against spacers and robots flared up in five locations around the city this week. The most violent demonstrations were at the trans- I'm a little confused what the point of the Chiron is, because normally if there's, like, one of these on the news, it'll have, like, either stocks or other incidental headlines. It's just saying the name of the network over and over, which is interesting. This rail plant in Brooklyn, where 30,000 jobs are basically Caves of Steel. I guess I don't remember Caves of Steel. ...being lost to robot workers. The city police, however, have matters well in hand. The citizens of New York have nothing to fear. We have matters well in hand. And that's the news of the week in review. See, it looks like there, there's a different Chiron. Like right there. And it looks like it actually has some kind of news. It makes me wonder if there was actually some of these earlier, but they covered it for some reason. Like maybe there was a headline in there that was a joke, but like someone... A producer or something was like, no, 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 cut that out. <laughs> Just seems weird. Weird thing to notice. Why is there a correct Chiron here, but it was covered earlier? Seems like a decision made late in the editing process is, guess what I'm getting. And that's the news of the week in review. I like her eyeshadow. It's Friday, May 25th, 2249. Oh, that's a rough transition. I get what they were trying to do, though. Good concept. Bad execution. Spacers, riots, robots. Whatever happened to your basic burglary? Oh, here comes the robot! Oh, look at him! <laughs> He's so cute! <laughs> Detective Bailey. Sammy, how many times have I asked you not to sneak up on me like that? 306, Detective. Just I love 218, and if anything happens to him, I will riot. I will riot if 218 dies. Forget it, Sammy. Forget what? <laughs> Detective Bailey, Commissioner Enderby wants to see you in his office right away. He's real worried. 
He just heard from Spacer Town. He's real worried. It's called Spacer Town. That's a little on the nose. So what else is new? Every time the boss got a furrowed brow, Sammy looked like he was gonna fry a chip. And I guess with half the, the little city legs. <laughs> Out rioting and Spacer Town pushing him around, he might be a little. Wait, why does he have reanimator formula? Did you see that green glowing goo? He's real worried. He's real worried. He's real worried. He's real worried. The trouble is, whenever Julia starts feeling the heat, it's lies. Property of the NYPD. Someone needs to save Sammy, a cab. <laughs> who ends up putting out the fire? I hear you're real worried, Julius. I told him, Commissioner. Thanks, Sammy. All cops are bots. Sit down, Billy. <clears throat> hey, help yourself to a cheese blend. Uh, you're the only one who can stand that sugary stuff, Julius. I went out a hundred years ago. Lige, Lige, don't, don't you ever long for the good old days? Before the robots, before the spacers? When you could get real food, real music. Fresh air, sunshine. All right, don't be crude, Bailey. I just had a call from Han Fasto. You know what he wants me to do? He wants me to bring a spacer onto the force. A spacer in the city? <laughs> They're petrified of catching Earth germs. Not this one. He's a robot. What? <laughs> exactly. He's going to have a robot partner. Wait. Oh, Fasto said it was... But it's, it's, he's a loose cannon. Chief, he's a loose cannon. It was just an experiment, you know, wouldn't last long. But you know, Lige, they're worried about Earth. Our birth rate, uh, overcrowding, food shortages. The underground police force has gone woke. The spacers are afraid we'll turn on them. So they want to have their robots in key positions on Earth to watch us. A spacer robot? No, oh, no, not a chance. The men will never stand for that. Yeah, I don't know if I can either. I've tried to be reasonable with these spacers, but, I mean, they act as if you aren't even there! Oh, damn. These things cost a fortune to fix. <laughs> but I'm not much good without them. Why don't you just get a genetic eye twist like everyone else? Look, Bailey, I can't tell Fast Off no. Now, I want you to go to Spacer Town, bring this wind-up detective back. His name is Daniil Oliva. We'll figure out what to do with him later. What Wait. is this? This is a VHS board game called Isaac Asimov's Robots, based off the works of Isaac Asimov. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Feels a little slow for a game. That's VHS games. I mean, this is slow even for a VHS game, I would argue. But yeah, you'd have segments that are like story, and then you'd pause and do gameplay. Spacer Town. I wish I had the rules for this. Outside, I can't do that. Guys, you don't have to go outside. The tube takes you right to their dome cover. Look, I gotta get out of here. I'm about ready to explode. I'm going over to Queens to get these glasses fixed. Samuel, fill you in on the details. This is a priority one assignment. <laughs> You'll need to establish a link-up with the technicians at Data Log Central, Detective Bailey. Thank you, Sammy. That's very helpful. You're welcome, Detective. Have a nice day. Oh shit, Daniel or Data Daniel Central, Olivia, they're using Elijah major Bailey. characters. Open a file for me called Assignment Robot. To play, take out the map and pick one clue packet. Put the rest away. Pause the tape until you're ready to continue. We don't have the cards, so I'm ready to continue. I haven't read Caves of Steel, apparently, because none of this is I'll familiar to me. I'll be heading over to, to Spacer Town, so I... I'll be heading over to Spacer Town, so I guess I'll need a map and any background information you can give me. Spacer Town. Spacers will not venture into Earth cities. You can reach Spacer Town by underground tube. Spacers. If they had to have an outpost, did they have to put it in New Jersey? I really don't want to do this. Spacers make me feel, well, small. And they're robots. I had nightmares about spacer robots, and now Enderby tells me I have to work with one. 
So he has like a phone. This is from 86. It looks like a flip phone, but he's touching it like a tablet. Which I guess does exist. You know, I have this kind of foldable phone, but they do make the ones that look like the clamshell. Hmm. I should have called in sick today. Well, almost there. Took the local to drag the trip out to half an hour, but now I'm here. It's more like a computer? Town. What do you think a phone is? Um, oh, I'd heard all about what would happen when I got there. Decontamination. <laughs> Got them all yet? Huh? Up, 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 no, up, there's one there. Ah, nasty little earth germ. Yeah, you better zap that one quick. Good. Good. Got the little... Not afraid of my blaster, but watch out for my sneezes. Is this electrolysis? I guess this means I... Nah, it doesn't hurt nearly enough. That's a rough way to get rid of dingleberries, ew. Pass, right? Huh? Otherwise you wouldn't- I haven't had electrolysis in three weeks because my electrologist has been on vacation. I'm very excited for Monday. We're getting so close to being done with my lip. Uh, sorry, um, could you direct me to Dr. Fastolf's lab? I'm here to see a man about a robot. You have found him. Oh, Dr. Fastoff, I'm sorry, I didn't... Excuse me, Detective Bailey. I am Daniel Oliver. You? <laughs> You're not a robot. Well... Yes, I am, Detective Bailey. I am a new humanoid robot developed by Dr. Fastoff himself. Android. He's an android. You seem doubtful. Perhaps I can convince you this way. Daniel? That'll do it. Detective Elijah Bailey will be arriving shortly from the city. I want you to wait for him outside the decontamination area and escort him to this lab. This is absurd. For a robot you can't tell from a man? What's the point? Come, I will take you to Dr. Fastolf's lab and tell you of his plan for Earth. Plan? What plan? It is Dr. Fastolf's hope that Earth will come to accept advanced robots as a liberating force in society. Your Dr. Fastolf's dreamer robot, Daniil. Perhaps, Detective Bailey. I like the model work. But he believes your planet is exhausted. Like, it's not incredibly realistic. Like, I've seen better stuff in, like, the Time Tunnel, which was decades earlier. That, by the way, if you haven't seen the Time Tunnel, incredible uh, miniature work for the time. I have it somewhere around here. Anyway, Time Tunnel's great. Would recommend if you're into, like, models and stuff. Robot Daniil. Perhaps, Detective Bailey. But he believes your planet is exhausted and cannot support your numbers. When you begin All to look... locations look like malls? That's just what the 80s and 90s thought the future was going to look like. It's actually pretty cool. Like, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting retrofuturism. I love retrofuturism because it gives you an idea of sort of what the aesthetic and cultural concerns are of the, like, time period that creates them. So you look at the early, like, 20th century and what they thought the year 2000 would look like, and it's very different than what the 1940s thought the year 2000 would look like, or what the 1980s thought the year 2000 would look like. Um, and, I don't know, it's interesting. 80s and 90s, a lot of it was either Blade Runner-esque, with a lot of concerns about, like, Japan or or the East taking over big business. So you'll see in like Back to the Future 2 as well as Blade Runner and a lot of other stuff from that era, you'll see um sort of cyberpunk dystopias and they usually have flavoring of like Japan or something like that um, because that was a fear of the time was Japan becoming a bigger economic powerhouse and its manufacturing outpacing the US per capita, stuff like that. Um, but you also see stuff like this, where malls were big in the 80s, and it was a big, like, communal third space for people. And so you saw that reflected in the ideals of future architecture was taking a lot of stuff from malls. It's pretty interesting. ...to other planets, as the spacers did long ago. He says you will need the help of robots. Your brilliant Dr. Fastoff hasn't done his homework, robots. There's no way any Earthman could ever deal with being on the surface of a new planet. 
No Earth man can stand being outdoors. No, only a spacer could live in a building like this. Is the daylight disturbing you? Certainly it's disturbing me, robot. The robot is more human than the man. Do you get it? All of this and more disappears like tears in rain. Here. I hope that's better. So Dr. Fastolf decided to gather information on Earth's attitude towards robots. Since police work deals with raw human emotions, he thought it might be a fine way to conduct Spacer research. Spacer sounds like a slur. Yeah. Since a humanoid robot could work it... alongside nope. a human detective without causing any comment, I was designed. Your Commissioner Enderby was consulted and... What is it? There's something wrong. The tingle field should not be on. The tingle field? I'm intrigued. Wait here. Go on. <laughs> Spacer is a chaser, but for aliens. Here's the lab. <laughs> you know, you're the first alien I've ever been with. Like, for reals. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we should just like keep this secret and like not, not to. <laughs> That's a very niche joke. I don't know if enough of my audience knows chaser tropes to get that. <laughs> Only a small number of individuals have direct access to Dr. Fastolf's lab. That robot lives to be over 19,000? Wow. He beats Bicentennial Man by a lot, doesn't he? Altered Undying says, I got it. My condolence says. Same with Ashrand. <laughs> oh, I never do this. Do you still have it? Friend Daniel, someone has made an attempt on the life of Dr. Fastolf. Is Dr. Fastolf unharmed? I was able to save him by not See, look at this robot. This is a great fucking robot. I like this. I like this a lot. I've lost a beam. I do miss De Sammy, though. Detective Bailey, you've come highly recommended. Well, you've got quite a reputation yourself, Doctor. I can see why. So what happened here, Doctor? You needn't concern yourself. This is a boring game. We have very different interests. I love this so far. I've enjoyed this thoroughly. I'm sorry. Our security force. This shit just does it for me. I don't know. Forces will apprehend the city person who shot at me. Are you telling me you don't want to sit and watch the entire 90s series of The Outer Limits with me? Because this is basically just the same vibes as the 90s Outer Limits show, and I'd sit and watch that for hours. <laughs> I'll take some dry, weird 80s, 90s science fiction where people sit in rooms and talk about shit. You saw the assailant, then you can identify him. No. He entered while Giscard and I were turned away from the door. Well, that's a show, not a game? I guess. I don't have the game cards, so we're basically just watching a movie. Well, then how do you know he was from the city? Detective Bailey. Spacers do not commit crimes. Robots prevent the possibility of crime by following the three laws of robotics. And who might you be? My name is Giscard. I see. Robot Giscard. And can you project a holo like your friend here, Robot Daniil? Certainly. So long as my memory of the event is fresh and vivid. Then please replay the murder attempt. We cannot actually watch The Outer Limits, I was joking. I guess we can watch it if I still stream for the next 50 years or so, then maybe we can do it. <laughs> As of right now, no, we can't watch the 90s Outer Limits. So, this I guess unless you actually come hang out with me, but I think there's a pretty low chance of that, so. The blaster being charged behind him, guess its meaning, and use his robotic speed to save him. Did you get a good look at the assassin, robot? No, detective. Mm-hmm. What time did this happen? At precisely 8.30 a.m. 
Mr. Bailey, as I stated before, space of security has already been set into motion. There is nothing for you to do. I suggest that you and Daniil return to the city. It is vital to begin your work. So I've been told. Your robot here mentioned your plan to show us city dwellers the error of our ways. It is extremely important, Detective. They literally just don't want you to be racist against robots. Holy shit. All this that you None see... of these people have seen Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> ...around you is but the faintest reflection of the culture spacers have achieved with the help of robots. Earth, on the other hand, has tunneled underground, hiding its head in the sand to the ever-increasing problems of overpopulation and diminishing resources. Your culture is doomed to collapse unless you begin to expand outward again. What I can't figure, Doc, is what's it to you? Oh, sorry about Spaces that. have become too content with their success, too proud, too conservative. Perhaps it is because of the long lives we lead. But should Earth join the Spaces out there in the stars, they would bring with them their vibrancy, their joy of life. Only together, with our science and your vitality, can all survive. It is feels like they stole elements of this for that weird iRobot Will Smith adaptation, which of course I own. iRobot, the original story, is a short story collection, and I believe there is a story about the robot getting tried for murder. Um, but they added a lot of like weird action elements and stuff because of the kind of movie it was. Feels like they stole some elements from this and combined it into other stuff to make iRobot. Bittergren says, fun fact, Data having a positronic brain was a reference to these robots having them. Yeah, I actually did know that. Time to begin the long climb from your underground cities to the stars, Mr. Bailey. Commissioner Enderby. What? I assume you know about the unprovoked... There's no answer step to the call. Your boss can just call you immediately and see what you're doing with no answer. That's a shame. Packed by an Earthman on space or Han Fastolf this morning. Uh, the uh, iRobot movie was originally nothing to do with Asimov's stories, then they retitled it for marketing purposes. Ew. Mr. Amaduro, welcome. Welcome. Yes, the incident in Fastolf's uh, laboratory was a terrible thing. Terrible. Because I remember Outer Limits did an adaptation of the robot uh, on trial for murder story. Um, Leonard Nimoy played the defense attorney in that one. Pretty good episode of The Outer Limits. Sam, get Bailey in here. This is an outrage to the entire space of community. We must be able to guarantee the safety of space of representatives on Earth. Mm -hmm. Our lives are too long and valuable to be endangered by violence. Commissioner, if you had dealt firmly with the riots against spacers and robots from the beginning, this brutal attack would not have occurred. I cannot let another such incident happen. You have 24 hours. To do what? To find the assailant and bring him to justice. 24 hours? Yes. Or I'll be forced to use the considerable powers of the space worlds to restore order. What powers? You mean the space of robots? Uh, the Federated Cities of Earth will never stand for that. It is of no concern to me what the cities of the Earth will or won't stand for. Bailey, get on this right away. It's not our jurisdiction, Julius. Excuse me, partner Elijah. Wait. But due to our special project, we so alone... That iRobot story is unrelated to Asimov's? Hold on. Isaac Asimov was heavily influenced by the Binder short story in his introduction to the story in As Isaac Animal... Isaac Asimov presents. Um, Asimov wrote, It certainly caught my attention. Two months after I read it, I began Robbie about a sympathetic robot that was the start of my Positronic Robot series. Eleven years later, when nine of my robot stories were collected into a book, the publisher named the collection I, Robot over my objections. My book is now the more famous, but Otto's story was there first. Okay, I didn't realize that. Well, there you go. It's good to know. Thank you. I have joint jurisdiction to pursue the investigation both in the city and in Spacertown. Well, that figures. That's a great cover, too, for this Amazing right. Stories issue. I'll pull it up for you. 
Love that. It's a cool 50s, 60s robot design. Hmm. All right, then, I'm going to need a list of everyone who had a pass to Dr. Fastoff's lab. Borgraf, which Earth people have access to his lab? Besides Commissioner Enderby, only Sophia Quintana. I'm a little confused with what this holographic projection is, because it makes sense from our perspective of the camera. But what does this look like to, like, the guy sitting in the chair and the guys on the other side? Like, how? what is, what is the perspective on this? Is it, like, a three-dimensional window? Does it work like TNG hollow screens? What is this? Assist at the City Bureau of Personnel Resources. Like, is the Thank phone you. projecting it? It kind of looks like Commissioner? it. Commissioner? Mr. Bailey? Yeah, I think there's kind of a light coming from the phone. 24 hours. I'll die for Sammy. I'm telling you. Sammy, get Sophia Quintana in here. Right away, detective. Commissioner Enderby is very upset. Commissioner Enderby is very upset. I dug up some background on Sophia Quintana while Sammy went to get her. Saw Nothing the 2000s Lost in Space in Theater, good theater movie. Oh boy, I have that one too. Um, That movie's rough. I don't like it, but I'm glad I own it. It's certainly an interesting one, and it does have a time travel ending, which I enjoy. Bureaucrat. Earth's leading proponent and <laughs> designer. It's got some good early 2000s futurism stuff, especially in the first scenes when they're still on Earth. Of the Sammy type of robot. But a lot of it's boring. Really? My detective. review of the early 2000s Lost in Space film. My office is only down the hall. Jane and I are quite busy. Important work. Sorry, Miss Quintana. The robots have gender? We're kind of under the black. Okay on this one. Commissioner Enderby wants me to... Julius is involved? Why didn't you say so, Mr. Bailey? What can I do for you? Miss Quintana. Please call me Sophia. I'm Jane. Someone tried to murder Dr. Fastolf this morning. I hope Sammy... No, God damn it! why am I like this? And Fastolf? Spacer Town? Is he all right? Last time I looked... But I have to establish your whereabouts for this morning. Thank you for asking. That's supposedly Deborah Jo Rupp as Jane. Should I recognize that name? Why do I not recognize that name? Let me look that up. I was going to say I hope Sammy gets some of the Robidosi. Sorry. <sighs> Deborah Jo Rupp. Oh, from... <laughs> <laughs> from that 70s show. The mom from that 70s show. Okay. Well, that's certainly something. She defended, uh, what's his name? Danny Masterson, which is a shame. Being us, Mr. Bailey. I worked in the office all Sounds like her. Right until just now, Sophia was in Washington. She didn't get back until late this what morning. What difference does it make where we were? Well, you were one of the people with the security pass to the lab. That's right. Would Sophia you please shut very... up? Mr. Bailey! Robosy was right there. You're right. Okay. I'm going to hang up my hat. I failed. I'm sorry. I have no further questions for you. So, Sophia, you were in Washington this morning? In fact, I was an honored guest at a banquet last evening. There's a small mention of it in today's Times, on page 24, I believe. I just got back. <laughs> that dreary two-hour ride on the Intercity Tube. And I understand that you did some work with Dr. Fastolf. Tell me about that. Well, Han and I shared a certain professional closeness. Yeah, that probably is a reference to THX 1138. Colleagues. Unless 1138 is a reference to this story? You understand. But I'm pretty sure it is THX 1138. Good morning, Miss Quintana. Which was George Lucas' student film that got him a lot of interest uh, prior to uh, making American Graffiti and Star Wars. Fastoff's done it then, has he? Sent his spacer robot into the city. I warned him! I've been assigned to work with Detective Bailey. Are you going to stand for this, Bailey? I have no choice. Now, please, Sophia, about your work with Bastoff. First, it was 
thrilling. The legendary Han Fastoff, brilliant, charming, handsome. You liked him a lot. Too bad he didn't. But as we became closer, I began to see the real man, possessed by his work, interested in nothing else, cold. Just talk to Vasilia, his daughter. She has to work with him every day. More than I could stand, I can tell you. He has a daughter then? If you could call her that. They don't act like any father and daughter I know. Mr. Bailey, you're upsetting Sophia. We must get ready for the Will that be all, Mr. Bailey? Yes, thank you. I'm going to talk to Fastoff's daughter, Vasilia. Get me some background data on Spacertown. I will. Also, I've been checking the city's computer files. We might find this useful, partner Elijah. I love stories about robots who are trying to learn to be human or aren't quite human or don't understand humans but are facsimiles of them. Central. Data's my favorite robot in all of fiction. I know he's an android. Log this data as entry A. Draw the data card labeled A. Look at one side or the other and place it face up so everyone can see it. Pause the tape until you're ready to go. Data Central will be going back to Spacer Town. Do you have anything for me? Spacers are germ phobic to the point of neurosis. Spacer lifespan is hundreds of years, Earth's uh, hundreds of Earth years long. I mean, is it neurosis if they're basically quarians? They have no immunity, I'd imagine, to Earth germs because they've been in space. That's the quarian problem. I have to use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Vasilia Fastolf's office was in the administration building, three miles from the lab. No way was I going outside, so I settled for trudging along the underground maintenance tunnel. Vasilia was kind of upset at having to meet me face to face. <laughs> I promised I wouldn't sneeze on her, but I could tell it was something more. It was clearly beneath her dignity to talk to me, but then I got the impression she wasn't keen on yeah. talking to anyone. Since Dr. Amadero has ordered our cooperation, I guess I have no choice, do I? This music does not fit this scene at all. It's like driving action music. Like, why is it just them? Make this brief, Earthman. I'll trade you brief for a little quiet. I oh, it's like diegetic. I see. I just thought it was scene music. It was in, it's actually in this room. Okay. Loud music. It helps my concentration. My bad. Mm-hmm. Have you heard someone tried to murder your father this morning? What was your name again? Have I heard about it? It was me. Oh, shit. Case closed. We did it. Earthman. Bailey, ma'am. Listen to me, Bailey. Han Fastolf has never been a father to me. He's basked in stolen glory for 80 years, living off of my discoveries, taking credit for my insight, and thwarting my career at every turn. I have a hundred times more interest in the robots he creates from my designs than in him. Fine. Stop making designs then? 
You seem pretty open about this, so he's not blackmailing you. It doesn't sound like just tell people and be like, I'm I'm not going to do designs anymore. I'll do designs for someone else to prove prove it. <laughs> Who would want to harm Dr. Fastoff? I don't know any Earth people. Well, that's your loss. All right, next question. Where were you at 8.30 this morning? Spacers don't I like commit. that she has a generic, like, uh, I forget what kind. Volumetric flask? Volumetric? Whatever the fuck this is. Science glass full of blue generic science liquid. That's how you know she's doing science. She's a roboticist working with some sort of blue fluid. Crimes, Bailey. Look, Bailey, I was here in my office all morning. Now back off. In fact, see you, profane priestess. I was Have fun doing D and D. Granulated cylinder, or graduated cylinder. Granulated, graduated. Engaged in a tri D call at about eight thirty. What can you tell me about Doctor Fastoff? Nothing. Why don't you ask him? Ask him why he manipulated affairs to stick me in this disease-infested hole. Ask him why he's here posturing about helping his little Earth brothers. Ask him why he's such a hypocrite. Oh, he loves Earth, but he hates your germs and your filth even more than I do. Now get away from me, Bailey. I can't take another second's exposure. Get out, or I'll have a dozen robots throw you out. Oh, no need for that. I think I've gotten just about everything I needed. Well, it's been a real pleasure chatting with you, Vasilia. <laughs> oh, what? what an asshole. Captain Squid says it's blinker fluid, you know, for the robots. Hbeard says maybe it's hydraulic fluid, which is uh, red. Maybe it's future hydraulic fluid. Maybe in the future, red is just blue. Bittergrin says everyone knows you can't be a scientist without beakers of colored fluids. That's the foundation of science. Oh boy, I hope I'm not coming down with something. See ya. Ask him why he's made a career of stealing my ideas! I needed to talk to Amadiro, and I figured this was as good a time as any. According to the news reports, Amadiro was not a charter member of the Han Fastall fan club, yet in Enderby's office, he'd made a great show of concern about the attack. Been expecting you, Detective. It seems as if you ruffled a few of Vasilia's feathers. <laughs> she acted like I was bringing her a personal case of bubonic plague. Vasilia can indeed be abrasive, Mr. Bailey. It seems to us, however, that you would be wiser to concentrate your efforts Sorry, in the Halloween city. Town. Look, I'm on this assignment at Dr. Amadiro's somewhat forceful request. So why don't you be the robot? I'll be the detective. I am sure that we can provide you with all the information you may need. Good. Good. So, just for the record, I need to establish where everyone was at 8.30 this morning. Fine, so? So, where were you? Uh, your question does seem irrelevant. However, for the record, so I was here at the administration complex. What were you doing at 8.30? Filing my daily report to Aurora via sub-ether Tri-D. Daily? The energy from one sub-ether call would feed an Earthman for a month. Quite so, Mr. Bailey. But Tri D is my one link to civilization. Nemesaur, thanks for gifting 20 tier one subs. Hell yeah. Thank you, Nemesaur. Even Dr. Fasto is in regular touch with Aurora. But all of this is beside the point. Where I was, or where Vasilia was, for that matter, is of no concern. Among spacers, there is no crime. You all say that. I'm getting tired of that. What makes you spacers so virtuous and pure? The robot will <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's something. I know, they're illustrating the three laws, I know. You are not hurt, Detective Bailey. Uh, no, no. As you can see, Detective, in space and society, our robots will always prevent a violent crime. Dr. Amadero, I could not... What if there just, like, isn't a robot around? Like, do the robots go into the bathroom with you? I don't know. There are no rooms without robots? 
keep from crushing. That seems not great. 67% to level 4 on a hype train. In your paperweight. How long is this game? We have about 24 minutes left in the tape. I'm sorry. Let me see that. Where were you this morning, Borograf? Really, Bailey. Dr. Amadero and I were working on a number of important matters. I was here reviewing a series of reports which Good would day, increase my capacity Mr. Bailey. to. Borgraf and I have quite a bit of work to do. I'm gonna get more water. I'm very thirsty. Be back in a second. And you have 18 hours. How does Chair like the VHS stream so far? Chair is gagged. I'm sick of their constant commentary, so Chair doesn't get to talk anymore. Here is some additional information that I've gathered in Spacertown. Perhaps we should return to the city after you log it. Okay, Central. Daniil's been doing some digging around. It's good, good. Enter this as entry B in the log. Draw a data card labeled B. Look at one side or the other and place it face up so everyone can see it. Pause the tape until you're ready to go. Something for me. Poor chair. Chair said green. It's fine. Extremist groups on planet Aurora want complete isolation of Earth. Struggle continues with, uh, Auroran. Oh, Auroran. Uh, Auroran moderates who favor slow integration of Earth into the spacer community. ultimatum to the city has but 12 hours left. It is rumored that failing an arrest, spacer robots will enter the city to put down the riots. No shouts for the chair. Am I sure it's not a storm cloak? 70% to level 4 with 45 seconds on the train. to robots. Do you get it? This VHS game had time for a dream sequence. Fun. Oh, Mr. Blast, why? Mr. Blast, thank I you for a thousand like bits, but you don't have to give me money. You're my father-in-law. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Another 200 bits, Jesus Christ. Over level four of the hype drink. Thank you. Much progress, partner Elijah. Patience, level four Danielle. complete. It's lesson number one if you want to be a good detective. Patience. Thank Eventually, you. if you have patience, you might stumble into something. Are you talking Apparently, about Mr. Blast your is human feeling intuition, generous today. today, Elijah? Yeah. Yeah, I guess you could call it that. I mean, we need facts and logic, but human intuition plays a big part in detective work. A big part. Look, listen. I want you to get me an exact list of everyone who had access to that lab, and I mean everyone. Human or robot, Earth person or spacer. Yeah, the yeah. game part of this seems pretty minimal. It feels like it's mostly you watch a movie with friends and then try and figure out the answer to the mystery based on the cards you pulled. But it seems like it'd be a terrible game to play more than once because it's the same movie, even if the cards are different. Other than Dr. Fastolf, Giscard, and you, of course. Of course. Kelton Amadero, Borgraf, Julius Enderby, Vasilia Fastolf, Jane, Sophia Quintana, and Sammy. Sammy! Where were you at 8.30 this morning? I Did was... Sammy do it? If Sammy committed this murder, 
working here at Flower Sheeps, thanks for gifting a sub, 9% to level 5. Station Detective Bailey. Did I tell you I am concerned about Commissioner Emberby? He's been quite upset today. He's yes, call me. He's been quite upset today. Elijah, I wonder why you are curious about Sammy's whereabouts. I am curious about everything, Daniil. But I guess I'm just grasping at straws. If Sammy committed Rat. murder, it was justified. Sammy can't disappoint you. You can only disappoint Sammy. Sping and it's, you know... Oh, yes, one of your Earth idioms. Perhaps you would like to look at this if you are indeed grasping at straws. Data Central. Enter this as data entry C in the log. Draw data card label C! You get it. New for me? Overall strength comparison. Space or robots? I, it, apparently this is something called S-Factor. Don't know what that is. But space or robots have 500 S-Factor. Earth robots have like 450. Human adults have like 140, 150. And children have 50. Okay. I like the screensaver in the background of the chart. Probably is strength factor. I prefer it be sassiness, though. Thanks, Phoenix. Keldon, you have got to get me off Earth. I'm young. I've got hundreds of years left if I can just get back to Aurora. I can't take any more of these Earth germs. Vasilia! Vasilia, I understand how you feel. I'm in danger every day myself. But you know I cannot intervene without Fastol's blessing. Are they not familiar with vaccines in the future? A rank is just that? do it. I can't. Rank or not. It would mean the end of any influence I have on Aurora. Perhaps if you... Never mind. But things will change, Vasilia. After this attack, on the Fastol's train. supporters will realize that Earth cannot be rehabilitated. They will lose sympathy for it. I can't wait that long. If I have to be subjected to the presence of just one more of those dirty earthers. Patience, Vasilia. I hate it too. I cannot abide their insolence, their familiarity. I don't know how fast off can feel we have anything in common with him. But he won't win in the long run, Vasilia. I will not lose to fast off this time. Listen to me, Daniel. A good detective doesn't limit his options. Now, I think we have to consider Vasilia and Amadero as suspects. Since the Spacers have no crime, it seems unlikely that Keldon Amadero or Vasilia would have tried to kill Dr. Fastolf. Additionally, Vasilia is Han Fastolf's daughter. Granted, but both of them have been under great stress since arriving on Earth. Are you suggesting they have become unstable enough to be considered suspects? That's what I'm suggesting. Then we have four suspects. Keldon Amadero, Vasilia Fastolf, Sofia Quintana, and Julius Thanks for the Enderby. hype train, everyone. Julius Enderby? He's the commissioner of police. But logically, he must be on the suspect list, must he not? <laughs> you know, Daniel, you may make a detective yet. So, if we include Enderby, we also have to include Borgraf, Jane, and Sammy. They all had passes, too. The first law of robotics precludes considering any robots as suspects. Wait a minute. We're not going to get to know who did yeah, it, me... right? Because I assume it changes between one of the four every time you play the game. So we're not going to get... There's not an actual answer. It's one of the four suspects, right? I'm assuming. Yes, so question. we're just going to be disappointed because we don't know. Doesn't matter. It's open-ended because it's a game. <laughs> uh, no, don't be offended. <laughs> It's Can just going to be like, and the, the, the person who did it was, flip over card. No. A robot may not harm a human being. May not harm a human being. That's correct, Elijah. Partner Elijah, here is an item in which you might be interested. Wake up, Data Central. Enter this stuff as data entry D in the log. 
And draw the D card, you know. In the morning. First law of robotics. Robots may not injure humans or through an action allow them to come to harm. Second law of robotics. Robots must obey a human unless it conflicts with the first law. The Zachary Mike! Thank you for the raid! Welcome raiders, I am Hannah, I am a leftist variety streamer. Today we're doing something fun. I like to take a look at old VHS stuff, and right now we're watching the end of a VHS board game based on the works of Isaac Asimov. It's pretty silly and campy, and we're having a good time. Um, Captain Squid with 100 bits says he wants the D. <laughs> oh, good thing to have me say right as we had raiders. Uh, give me a follow if you'd like, and make sure you check out the Zachary Mike. Can we get a shout-out? We did. Check out the Zachary Mike, please, here on Twitch. Sophia has been quite upset. Commission. These robots are my best friends, and if anything happens to them, I will burn the world to the ground. Um, H. Baird with 40 bits says, If you ask an Asimov robot to make you bacon and eggs every morning, will the robot stop at some point to save your arteries? You know? Maybe Asimov wrote a whole book. All about it. Who knows? Commissioner <laughs> Enderby as well. You do a good job at perceiving the Commissioner's feelings, Sammy. Sophia doesn't like the new humanoid robot. He makes her feel badly about her robot designs. All robots make Commissioner Enderby feel badly. Except me, of course. I'm glad that you don't make the Commissioner feel badly, Sammy. I'm telling you, these robots are gonna hook up. This is the story I'm most interested in. The murder? I don't care. They're not getting less dead. These robots are in love. <laughs> Sophia doesn't want any space or robots to come to the city. They are too frightening for humans. She says all robots should be friendly and make humans feel superior. I can do that. Oh, the head pat. The head pat. That's Riz. <laughs> Ask permission before you give head bat pats to anyone. Good morning. This rough cut of heart beeps was weird. I was looking at heart beeps the other day. You know how much heart beeps costs? Twenty dollars. Not buying anything these days, but like, what's up with that? Why is it twenty dollars to buy heart beeps? <laughs> it's seven thirty a.m. There are three hours left for city police. This looks like Doctor Who. Depends on the decade. To apprehend. But yeah, yeah, it does. Reminds me a little bit of the um candy guy. Oh my goodness. Um, the Candy Man. Anyone who's not familiar with the candy man, oh boy, he's something. He's a man made out of candy. Um, I don't believe you've met my young friend Ace, an expert in calorification, incineration, carbonization, and inflammation. I beg your pardon. She's come to look at your oven. Has she indeed? Then she should wait to be asked. Impolite guests get to feel the back of my candy hand. That may be... John <laughs> Fastoff's assailant. Rumors that spacer robots are already loose in the city. Have I mentioned sci-fi is my favorite genre? ...set off new riots. Attempts to reach Commissioner Enderby for comment have been unsuccessful. In other news... Okay, Bailey, what do you got? Daniil and I have made some progress, Commissioner. Daniil? That's right. The robot. <laughs> We're going back to Spacer Town. I think we need to have another chat with Dr. Fastolf himself. And I'd like a few other people present, Commissioner. It doesn't look like you. Tony Todd. Under the suit, it's just him and thousands of bees. Me. It muffled the noise. By Tri D, at least. I started to get information from the Spacer Town. There's lab about ten minutes left on this video, and then we're we're watching various weird VHS stuff. Interesting. The assassin knocked over a vial of activated iridium while escaping. There they are running particle tests and combing the area for clues. Here is a preliminary report from the Spacertown security. It's data. He has Central. it. Central. We've got entry E for you. Preliminary security report. Raiders, the game works. We, we're the computer, basically. You're supposed to solve the mystery. We don't have the game cards, though, so we don't know what's happening. 
first law at Data Central. That was a big help. Eight minutes. Central. They did. What's they did miss the banger song about the stamps. Meridium, when activated, can be used to track positronic pathways in robot brain analysis. Oh my god, it's Cyber Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Dr. Fastall, what were you doing when the assassin attempted to kill you? I was engaged in work that required total concentration. And what was the nature of that work? Well, I was going over some plans. I see. Perhaps Giscard can be of greater help. How can I help you, Detective Bailey? Please play back the holo of the murder attempt. Certainly. Weird how they say hollow, like holo. It's a hologram. Hollow. Oh, freeze the ending. Now run it back and freeze the beginning. Giscard. Wait, was he trying to off himself and the robot stopped him? Run it further back. Dr. Fastolf? We must comply, friend Giscard. Or is it literally just the same answer as the iRobot movie? Where he was, he had the robot kill him or try to Now, this card, give us audio and play the whole thing back. Please All continue. he had to do this whole time was ask the robot, no, 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 show me the whole murder. Death, Ryan. How is that an ending? Show me the murder, robot. There it is. No, 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 the whole thing. Go back further. Oh, here's the answer to the mystery you spent a week trying to solve. Darn unforeseen. Robots suck, apparently. Then, Giscard and I are concerned about possible harm to humans. How should we proceed? You must press forward with the Danny Lolovar strategy more rapidly. I understand. I have instructed Giscard and you in the strongest possible manner. Okay, so is this guy not the real him? It's a robot copy? It's like an android copy he made to do something? Okay. That this is the ultimate path of human happiness. Do you not believe this? I am trying to follow your instructions. Friend Giscard has helped me to yes. understand the purpose. Giscard is invaluable. I find it difficult to get along without him here on Aurora. But it was essential that it's he the go green screen planet with you to Earth. Both for appearance's sake and as a practical matter. Is there anything else? No. I will speak with you tomorrow. Pastolf sent a robot of himself. Exactly. Daniil, if you would please get the completed report from Spacertown Security, I think we can begin to draw some serious conclusions about this case. I will do so immediately. I am pleased to meet you, friend Han. It became clear to me that Fastolf could not have come to Earth himself. He was the only spacer who did not exhibit disgust at being in my presence. But robot Fastolf's behavior was at odds with Vasilia's description of her father's overriding fear of Earth germs. What better way for him to implement his plan for integrating robots into Earth society than to send a robot to do the job? I mean, he already did with the other robot. I don't know if... I don't know if that's, like, the best plan... I feel like, if anything, now you've just started some sort of horrifying mass hysteria where everyone's gonna think their loved ones are being replaced by exact robot android duplicates. But, like, whatever. <laughs> it's not my plan, so... Additionally, Fastolf's ongoing political battles with Keldon Amadiro and Vasilia... That's true! His, his bigotry solved the crime! ...provided strong <laughs> incentive for him to create the perfect robot. One that would fool even them. Bailey, your ramblings lead nowhere. You uncover the robot fast off, but it doesn't change anything. There's only a few minutes left. You have no culprit. Partner Elijah, I have the completed security report. Thank you. 
I feel like the robot partner was very incidental to this whole thing. Did he really help that much? He kind of just handed him stuff and, and like looked at stuff on a computer. Partner, Daniil. This game is based off um, Asimov's writing. I think we can just about wrap this thing up. Enter this final security report as entry F. Pull the card that we don't have. Last call. Last call, Data Central. Last call. League of Earth Cities meeting to consider options to space or threat. Support warning, uh... Support warning for Fastoff's position on Aurora. Only minutes left on uh, Amadiro's deadline. The culprit, Bailey. Dr. Amadiro, we now have enough evidence to discover who did it, why, and how. Perhaps you should have Data Central render an indictment. Data Central. We only have a few minutes left on Amadero's deadline. You should be able to name the suspect, spell out the motive, and describe the opportunity before time expires. Bailey, out. That's it? We don't get to know because of the game? Fuck! Who was it? Who did it? <laughs> I'm gonna say it was the newscaster. She was the first one I saw, so I'm gonna say it's the newscaster. The newscaster did it. <laughs> Excessive Observer, thanks for 47 months. That was fun. Um, I enjoyed the aesthetic of that. I, I really wish we had had the cards to play. That's a shame that we couldn't get them. Um, interesting. Interesting little piece of pop culture ephemera from the 80s. It was you in the den with the candlestick. I knew it. Fucking knew it. Never trust newcomers. <laughs> Welcome. Hmm. What did I want to watch next? I had some short ones at some point. Stranger Danger. Choking Victim. That one looked pretty good. The Feelings of Bowling. This one's only three minutes. This should be great. Hydrate. In the book, it was the commissioner. There you go. That helps. Thank you. Now I have a canon answer. Hell yeah. I'm assuming, was the commissioner trying to kill him because he didn't want robots on the police force? So I'll kill the guy that did the robot. It's my guess. Hi, I'm Dick Ritker. The philosophy of the Dick Ritker program is centered here in this pyramid. Your basics and your fundamentals. Science and knowledge of bowling. Mental game. Then we use physical education skill drills to bring what we call the pure, true feelings of bowling. Release, free swing, balance, secondary timing. Push away the steps. The skill drill feeling is the pure feeling. Repetitions create muscle memory, positive effects for the bowler. The final thing we do then is blend. Blend together each of the six parts into the full approach. When we blend, it is so smooth and easy and effortless. And the mind says, total strike feeling, total. This is the horniest anyone has ever made bowling sound. Strike feeling. Bowling is the least horny sport. Bend the fingers. Do not squeeze the hand. Fingers do not move. Fingers do not. <laughs> Those are the nails you gotta keep short. Captain Squid says, I went for a degree in bowling science, but I had to change my major. Do not move. Do not move. Same, same, same. If it's the same, it is consistent. Lift, 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 lift. You know what? Fuck it. Wood. Oh, these lanes are terrible today. The ball seems to go everywhere. You may do this at home. Same, back, same, forward. This time, we'll use a cup. Back, release, back. Release. Do not bend the wrist back. Do not cup the wrist under. Do not turn the arm or the hand, the elbow or the wrist. Raise the shoulder. Touch your ankle as I touch mine. Relax and make believe you take a drink. First, the toe slides forward. Then we get a deep knee bend. We lean forward. Look down with the eyes. Don't look out. The balance arm will place 
out somewhere for balance. You're trying to learn how to finger the balls? Do I have a Google search for you? The ball will hang by your side. Raise the sliding heel off the floor. Back, relax. Back, relax. Back, thumb. Yeah, here's a link. You're just about ready to bowl. We call this the drop away. We call this the up push. Our concern is the feeling. You'll need a partner to assist you. Ready, begin, push. Let it rest, let it rest, let it rest. Take it back, please dry the hand. We would like to dry the hand. We will stop and dry the hand. Dry the hand, please. Stop after the swing and dry the hand. Drying of the hand is an important safety feature. Very important that the hand is dry or else the ball will drop and someone could be injured. When the piston comes in, I immediately go. It's obvious I bowl with my feet. Set the tempo for the approach, create the consistent rhythm. Short, short, and bowl. Smooth, easy, effortless gliding approach. All techniques blended together. Do the push away, free swing, step, step, and bowl. And two extra swings. Now we see what the total strike feeling means. In order to develop the rhythm and timing in your total it's strike learning feeling, to bowl. it's important to work on the tempo steps. Ready, begin. Short, short, and bowl. Bounce, bounce, and bowl. Short, short, slide, bring it up. Step. Road chords too, thanks for following. I'm short, glad it was this video that did it. Short, slide. It tells bring me a lot up. about you. Take two. <laughs> short, short, slide. Bring it up. Select yours and practice it before you take the practice swing technique. Ready? Begin. Short, short, and curl. H. Baird says, I'm short, glad to short, learn about balls curl. from Dick. Bounce, bounce, and curl. Bounce, bounce, and curl. The philosophy of your total strike feeling has developed your total strike feeling. If you'll use the material, pass it on with the feelings, and stay within the safety, you will have some of the same successes we've had worldwide. Good for him. He seemed to enjoy that. I hope he had a great career bowling. I really do. I really, really do. Cheerleader tryout secrets. I never got to try out for cheerleading. I guess I could have. I can't imagine my dad would have liked that very much. Anyway, here's a video. If you have the necessary desire to become a cheerleader, you already possess 75% of what it takes to become one. That's right. I don't know if that math checks out. Right, 75%. The final 25% involving the techniques, the motions, the flair, the attitude, and the exhilaration is what- See, no, all those things sound like most of it. All those things sound like most of it. I don't think you're doing your math right. I don't think that's 25%. I don't... I don't think that's correct. This video is all about... This first hand position is called the candlestick, and the instructor's hand shows it in perfect form. The proper fist is made by curling the fingers lightly against the palm, but not so lightly that- I think that's also how you do a punch. You're supposed to make sure your thumb's on the outside. <laughs> it looks like a donut. Lennon Cat says financial success is 90% <laughs> gumption and 10% already having lots and lots of money. There's the tabletop. With those fists turned outward, we have a position we call knockers. No individual action fires up a crowd as much as the jump. It's a split second of power, energy, and all the exuberance that your spirit can muster. So let's look at some of the best. Remembering that you should normally jump facing the crowd, the first basic approach is the NCA or step approach, the whip approach. Repeating the tuck jump in sets of eight builds stamina. The herky must have one knee bent. To all of the raiders, I promise the videos aren't just mostly innuendos. <laughs> the stream is not mostly innuendos. It's only like half innuendos. Hmm. Mm, 
Breaking Bad rap song. Hi, remember me? I'm Bernie the Saint Bernard. And I was perfectly happy as a regular angel. But then I was called for a special assignment. Did things ever change the puppy girl angel? Then when Mr. Goodfellow said that I would come to Earth as a St. Bernard dog to help Daniel and Jennifer, I thought to myself, I can't handle this. Well, I didn't much like the assignment. But once I got here, I was surprised to find out that I was no ordinary St. Bernard. I looked funny, and my voice had changed, so I sounded even funnier. Me, 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 me. Wait, they can't even talk on Earth? That's fucked up. Don't take away their ability to talk. Journey says, for some reason I'm reminded of the UK politician discussing housing who said 40% from option A, 40% from option B, 40% from option C. Fuck, can we do that again? Mr. Prescott, we're live. But that was the way it was meant to be. And only Daniel and Jennifer are able to see me as I really am. Everyone else sees only a regular St. Bernard. I'll never forget when I first met Daniel and Jennifer. <coughs> Daniel fell down and broke his arm, but we got through that just fine. <laughs> Dr. Burgess put on a cast, and I even signed it in my own special way. <laughs> and You've been branded child with the mark. So, through God's love, my special assignment became a very special friendship. And we all discovered one of the Bible's most important truths. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Or you could say, with God's help, you can handle anything. All righty. Well, happy for the furry angel. <sighs> you can be <laughs> this is kind of funny this is the start to a video for recruiting people into uh freemasons you can be certain that you have a friend within the masonic fraternity who thinks very highly of you you should be very proud that he believes you have the qualifications to be worthy of his recommending you for membership in freemasonry please consider it the highest compliment that he has shared this video with you. The generic B-roll handshake in front of these fucking weeds is the most incredible piece of B-roll I've seen in months. Consider it like, the why? highest compliment. Why are they in front of these weeds when they're doing their whatever generic business B-roll handshake? <laughs> that he has shared this video with you. It is a message of kindness from friend to friend. That was lovely. Thank you. The following is an interplanetary space network presentation. This and was now, a Canadian children's show from 1978. It's time for that top rated intergalactic game show, Make Your Move, with your host, that ever popular Earthling, Ronnie Buck Rogers. And today's contestant from the planet Alpha Centauri. Stay with us, we'll be right back. So some kind of kids educational show that's like supposed to be a game show but with aliens? Okay. Halloween Town, all of my, all of the hackers think your house is mine. That's why. Here's the star of Make Your... Taking out your grid. Move, Ronnie Buck Rogers. Hey. Uh, thank you, thank you. Hello, Universe. 
I wonder if he and Elton John ever switched, like, jackets. Are you ready to play our game? Fucking oh. glorious. Well, we're gonna play anyway. <laughs> All right, let's meet and greet our first contestant. He's from the planet Alpha Centauri. <laughs> Alpha Centauri's a star. That's right. He looks like one of the Cantina Band aliens. Galactic greetings! Is making weird noises a joke? Sometimes. I'm quiet compared to the video. <laughs> oh, Galactic greetings yourself! All right, let's get underway. Now, the rules of the contest are simple. Answer all challenges correctly and you win a fantastic prize! <laughs> all right, now all challenges will consist of a slide, flip, and turn maneuver. Now, here's your first challenge. Demonstrate the following. A slide. Good! Now, Excuse me, they're called Jizz Whalers? They actually changed it in canon. That genre of music is no longer called Jizz in the Star Wars universe. Never forget what they've taken from you. Very good. And now, a turn! A turn! Oh, Joe Flattery, the guy who died recently? That's interesting. I didn't pick this intentionally. It was uploaded nine days ago, that's why. It, must have, it was uploaded because of he passed away. Simon, thanks for following. Oh, I did hear about O.J. Simpson. We watched an O.J. Simpson thing earlier. So it seems like this episode is themed around spatial orientation changes and what they're called. Alpha Centauri and is one for one, but can he meet the next challenge? h -Bird says it's a pity. After devoting the last 30 years, OJ never did find, quote, the real killer. Maybe the real killer was inside of him the whole time. Triangular Wizard of shape. Oz ending. You're welcome. Of course it's triangular shape. That's not the question. The question is, what new position will this triangle take when flipped along its longest side, draw your answer. Spatial reasoning is not my strong suit as I have aphantasia and cannot picture things. Like if I had that on a piece of paper, I could mirror it. Because that's basically what you're doing is in this case you're mirroring it because you're flipping it on its longest one, which is the bottom one. So it would be... But I couldn't do that freehand. I can't picture shit. Yeah, I'll do it. You say it'll look like that when flipped along its longest side? Is he right? We'll soon find out. Bad break, fuck. You're absolutely right! <laughs> All right, that's the signal for my favorite part of the show, a blast from the Earth's past. Check out the adventures of that 20th century superhero from the planet Earth, the last to see man! Oh, they got some claymation too, that's nice.
I wonder if this is the same person who did, um, I don't know if anyone remembers Kablam! It was a variety show on Nickelodeon. They had segments, um, around a character named Penny that was also claymation. Looks done in a very similar style. Some of natural history, plasticine man is working And frankly, there's only so many professional claymation people working in this era. <laughs> much less fucking today, but... Cover. Oh yeah, this very much looks like the same people. Could be wrong. Can you spot him? There have been some baffling burglaries here. Night after night, precious gems and priceless artifacts are stolen from this wall safe. The police, however, have found no signs of forced entry. No one has been seen entering or leaving the museum. And yet, the burglaries continue. Will the master thief strike again tonight? Thank you Plasticine for the man link. Stands alone we'll in save the it. Darkness and waits. At exactly one minute after midnight, the thief makes his melt move. man with the power Look, to there by the fire. Melt. It seems plasticine man isn't the only one in disguise. <laughs> is melt man a reference to the incredible melting man? Which is a movie I own. I've seen it. Watched it with Mr. Blast actually once. Um, the effects are cool in The Incredible Melting Man. It's a pretty boring movie, but. <laughs> He's headed right for the safe. 90 degrees to the right, 180 degrees to the left, 360 degrees to the right. Ah. Gotcha! Hey! What? Hey, let me down! <laughs> Plasticine man! Hi. You've done it again! Well, now that our Alpha Centaurian has had a chance to rest, it's time for another challenge! Are you ready? Ready! All right, here we go! What new position will this rectangle assume if it is turned 90 degrees clockwise three times around this point, will it come to rest on position A, B, or C? B. B. Is he right? <laughs> Let's see. Clockwise, 90 degree turn. Once. I just want to see what happens when he wins. Hold on. <laughs> He did it! He did it! A flawless play! You are a grand prize winner! That's right, and just look at the prizes you've won! A ticket for you and your loved one to Argo 4, the paradise planet of the universe! That looks like a gas giant. Pretty sure that's a gas giant. I don't think you can vacation on a gas giant. I think you'll die. <laughs> and to get you there, we have a brand new sleek shuttle craft. Okay, that's good. That's pretty good. And it's all yours for playing Make Ya Move! <laughs> Not really sure the rules of that game. It wasn't really a competition, but it was a cute joke. That's incredibly obnoxious. It depends. Do I need a physical surface to anchor to in a breathable atmosphere? Unfortunately, I need both of those things. Yes. We don't need drugs to make our life peace. Hey! Drugs ain't cool. I also can only handle around one atmosphere of pressure, give or take, so if we could, like, keep it around there, that'd be great. Cheap tricks.
Starry, The Wiz, featuring magic you can learn at home. And now, ladies and gentlemen, black and white floor, conspiracy theorists on high alert. The Wiz. For those who came from the raid, um, on uh, one of my favorite things to do, and I guess the key feature of the channel is Tinfoil Tuesdays. I debunk and talk about the psychology of conspiracy theories and what people who believe conspiracy theories believe. They think black and white flooring checkerboard is a sign of the cabal. So if you hear me make weird references, I'm not into conspiracy theories. I mean, I'm intellectually into them, but like, I'm not, I don't believe them. I just think they're interesting from a why people believe them point of view. And Helen, welcome. I feel they need to explain that so people in passing don't hear that and think, oh, this streamer is pretty bonkers. Come to our show. Before I am, but not for that reason. Before we go any further, let's get to know each other just a little bit better. First of all, all of my friends just call me Wiz. That's right, they just call me Wiz. Although my real name is... Well, come to think of it, that is my real name. Never mind, call me anything you like, just don't get cheeky. Now, one of the main problems with magic and magicians and magic shows is all of that strange equipment that magicians Thanks, have. Thanks, Sine That's right, some of that stuff's quite expensive, and it's very difficult for somebody just starting out in magic to buy some of those things. The other problem is the fact that the equipment itself is so strange. I mean, people go to a magic show and see you using all this huge, unusual apparatus, and they say, Oh, well, if I had a magic box like that, I could do the same thing. So what we're going to do today is learn how to do some magic tricks using everyday items that you'd find. I used to like to learn little magic tricks as a kid and card tricks and other weird things. Uh, I don't really remember them now, but uh, I put on a magic show for my family once. I'm sure they hated it. <laughs> and your own house. That's right, just little things that everyone's got in their as own As a kid, home. I seem to like attention. It's a good thing I grew out of that. To get things started, let's begin with a little mystery known as the cups and the balls. Now, as we promised, here's three items right here that everyone finds in their own home. Three styrofoam cups. And inside the cups, we've got some items that you might have to look around for just a bit. Little orange fuzzy balls like that. Now, you can find these in a hobby shop, or if you can't find them, you can use little rolled up pieces of paper napkins. At any rate, we've got the three balls there and three cups. One, two, three. What we're going to do first is take one little fuzzy orange ball, place it on top of two of the cups, cover it with a third cup, make a magical gesture, and look. The ball penetrates the cups right down to the bottom. Now we're going to cover this one orange ball, take a second orange ball, place it on top of the two cups, cover that one as well, once again, make the magical gesture, and what have we got? Two balls have penetrated the cups. One third time, two balls there. I wouldn't mind if you all left right now. If you can organize everyone to leave at the same moment, I'd borderline be impressed. <laughs> With the two balls. <laughs> but I would be sad. It would make me actually sad. If that's, if you want, if you want the actual answer, it would make me cry. And show you how the trick works at the same time. I'm very by insecure. Down one, two cups. There goes the invisible ball. Right through making four little orange balls. Now, the way this really works actually is with four balls. The problem is that none of them are actually invisible, except that one of them you hardly ever see the whole trick, because it's hidden right there in the bottom cup. Now, you see we've got two cups that have nothing in them in one cup. It's got the little orange ball in it, and then you've got the three balls here. Now, we turn over one cup, which is empty, then we mm. take the cup that's got the ball in it, and we turn it over. Now, notice I don't do this too fast. If you do it too fast, the audience will think, oh, he's trying to hide something. Just go over it at a regular natural speed. One cup down, two Captain cups. Captain Squid says, okay, we'll stay and watch videos about balls. Place one of the little balls Thank on you. top. Thank you. I don't ask very much. Cover that one, and it goes right through. Now, we're going to do the same thing again. One empty cup. Here's the cup that's got the ball in it. Cover this first ball like that. See, I didn't go fast. Place a second ball here, and it looks like it's gone through as well. One third time. Once again. This is actually one of the tricks I think I learned as a kid. I had a little magic kit that came with like a video. Take away Was it this door. video? Because I did this trick too with the water? And those Did I bags. have this video? When did this come out? If not, I had a magic kit that maybe he was involved in developing because it had like the same, those, these two first tricks are tricks that I know were in the kit. It's, 
helps hide the secret. I guess these are also probably just really basic tricks that it's easy to throw a kit together, so. Now we've gotten a three and a one on this side. Three and a one. Add That's cute. I need to learn magic again. <laughs> Take a look. It's in a book. Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. So it's important to have access to updated software to stay ahead of the threats. This is how to meet people on the internet from 1997. Install and use antivirus software. Follow some simple cautionary rules and you should have no reason to fear viruses. Don't boot your computer with a strange floppy. Don't download applications from the net unless you're sure they're from a reliable source. And keep a good virus scanning software up and running on your system and you should be just fine. Can you name a computer virus? A computer virus. Uh, Donatello, there's a new one called Donatello, I'm told. We just heard about it two days ago. Uh, yeah, the word scan. That's a, that's a it's funny how the economics of grifting has changed over time. Computer viruses were more of a thing back in the day, but nowadays with how many, like, how more complicated computers are and built-in antivirus stuff, it's easier to socially engineer people to get their information than it is to get a Trojan thing on their computer. You're better off calling a boomer and, and pretending to be, I'm not telling you to do this, don't do this, this is immoral, but I'm saying as a scam, it makes more sense to call some random boomer to try and claim your Microsoft and ask for their social security number than it is to try and put something on their computer maliciously. Bit of a virus. NYB or Genesis or I deal with all of them. Uh, stealth Boot H virus. Yes, I've dealt with lots and lots of viruses. Colors virus. Yes. And the Good Times virus, which was a hoax. Uh, Steve Gatto. I think that's one of the worst ones I've ever come across. In today's computer, I'm a little confused by that graphic, but okay. World bigger is definitely considered better. New applications continue to add features and functionality. The computers get faster with more RAM and bigger storage capacity. Now, the current rage in the productivity yeah, field, of office RAM. suites, are amazing applications that can perform a bewildering variety of tasks. A lot of us use office suites on a daily basis. Full blown applications for Word processing. If you call a boomer and pretend to be Microsoft, Kit Boga will hunt you down. It's true. You'll be trapped in an ever never ending maze of fake phone trees for the rest of eternity. I wouldn't recommend it. Also, scamming people is wrong, so don't do it. I'll be back in just a sec. I have to urinate. Um so while I do that, uh where's my DVD thing? I almost never use that. I should. And then, uh, what, what's Cher gonna tell you about from my collection? Cher will tell you about... Battlefield Earth, starring John Travolta. Well, you were learning to spin! I'm back. How it do? How how it do? How it do? Thank you. I like the DVD thing too. I found that and I was like, that's cute. Also matches my whole collection thing. So why not? 
so bad it's good or just bad? So bad it's good. I think Battlefield Earth holds up to the funny movie watch test. Would recommend. Would recommend. We decided to renew for 50 cycles with endless options for renewal. Endless options for renewal. Spreadsheet. Man, I must sound like an absolute loon. I'm referencing a movie we were talking about. Those are lines from the movie. It's in the like. Sometimes, though, we should take a step. It is. It's based on a book written by L. Ron Hubbard, starring John Travolta, a quite famous Scientologist. Back and look at what we can do with a simple, basic tool. Now, long before the office suite was popular, there was the works package. Small and surprisingly powerful, they are without a doubt some of the best values in the software market today. I thought we'd take a look at one of these mighty mites. Claris Works is a mainstay in education and equally popular amongst many home users. Can I add one somewhere? Oh my god, why is the title you'd be Finding right. People on the Internet? Company logo score stored. I can copy that. And then I can paste it right into here. Oh, so you can start your own blog. All address and all that sort of stuff online. But we have with us an expert at tracking people down online. Diane Curry. Oh, like finding people online, not meeting them. Finding them, even better. Siberian Networks Incorporated. Siberian Networks Incorporated. Mm -hmm. Good. Diane, thanks for joining us. You teach a course on finding people online. Yes, I do. It's a popular course? Yes, it is. A lot of people want to find, uh, want know that there's so many people out there on the internet, but they want to find out how to get in touch with them. That's right. People are interested. People are very interested. Now, can we find uh, people's personal information, like their phone number, that sort of stuff, as well as their email address? Or, or are internet searches pretty much confined to just their email addresses, their electronic lives, as it were? There actually are complete phone books and directories online that contain <gasps> their... You can find a phone book on the internet? Oh, my God. That's incredible. <laughs> Story from 1995 about newspapers, uh, them predicting, correctly, newspapers in the paper format dying in favor of digital versions. There's something very romantic about newspapers. We've been getting our news from them for centuries. But times are changing. Ink on paper may have survived the onslaught from television and radio, but can it live in the age of the computer? No. You know, some people, when they talk about the information superhighways and all this new technology, uh, assume that... Uh, Knight Rider Design Lab. Nerd! Love it. Traditional newspaper. Where's my Knight Rider? Oh, my Knight Rider Blu-rays are downstairs. ...are going to become the road... They're with my 80s TV, not sci-fi. That was a hard call, but I made it. Kill. It's next to Miami Vice instead of Quantum Leap. Uh, ...out there in the future. Roger Fiedler is from Boulder, Colorado, on the edge of the Rocky Mountains. He spent the last 15 years developing his vision, a newspaper of the future, one that doesn't require paper. The interactive graphic now. Oh, a web page. <laughs> so when you click on the graphic of Lanamate on the front page. Instead, his electronic newspaper is displayed on a tablet. In essence, just a lightweight portable computer. Where's mine? Downstairs still. I guess my phone's a tablet. It's a pretty good tablet for 95, honestly. Touch the articles that interest you, and they instantly appear. This simulation used the tricks of television, but the first real tablet is not that far away. Mmm, this one isn't even real, it's just a display piece because of course they couldn't- I didn't see how thin it was when it was just the front shot. That's like what a modern tablet looks like, just with big-ass bezels. It's about as thin as a modern one, maybe slightly bigger. Today. Would have been impossible in 95 though, not with that color, like, display. You could produce a, uh, a panel that would do everything that we want to do now, but it would probably cost something in the order of $15,000, uh, which is a bit uh, out of the consumer electronics range. Uh, what we're hoping for is a tablet. For a reference, this, and this is because it's folding, is $1,800, a normal tablet. I don't know what the Apple ones are because I'm an Android person, but my Android tablet cost like $800, I think. That was years ago. 
that's going to be somewhere in the thousand dollar range uh, initially ultimately getting down into the range of maybe a hundred dollars two hundred dollars for the low end yeah you can do that now there are plenty of tablets you can go out i used to work at toys r us this was like a decade ago but even then there were like cheap low-end tablets or kids tablets that were in that range 200 bucks 260 maybe i imagine now you could get ones from lesser known companies for like 80 bucks if you really wanted to it wouldn't work very well probably but you'd probably find them somewhere on the internet uh hbaird says hey now they had tablets back then sort of hey golf take a member on your newton beat up martin Beat up martha bah! wow that's a good newton think pad joke <laughs> for those who don't know um that was uh, uh like a personal digital organizer thing from back in the day that was pretty famous because it had it was supposed to be able to read what you wrote and turn it into digital text and it was terrible at reading it so you'd write like hello world and it would completely not know what you were trying to write the technology just wasn't there yet these mock tablets were made to show the design engineers what's required. They weigh less than a kilogram. They have a high resolution screen, about twice as great as today's computer screens, which will make- This is actually pretty interesting to see, considering this is pretty much exactly right. This is like 20 years early, and they like got the form factor exact, except for the bezels. And like, I don't blame them for that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, good job. Make that as easy to read as paper. Here's a pointer for touching the various articles you're interested Honestly, even the design of, like, the UI for the fake web page isn't, like, terrible. It definitely looks 90s, but, like, I've seen worse. And... Ooh, my neck hurts like a motherfucker. Memory cards for loading information in and out. Oh, they do not need to be that big. Holy shit. First of all, Wi-Fi, which, of course, like, they're not going to necessarily think of. Uh, so you can transfer files wirelessly. Second of all, the terabyte micro SD I have in my tablet is a micro SD and it holds a terabyte. Uh, look, look at this thing. If I had a memory card this big, it would be like 20 terabytes. <laughs> out of the tablet. Well, this lab was set up to look further out in the future than, uh, than most uh, facilities for newspapers, uh, where the future is next Sunday's edition. Uh, we think that the first generation of practical tablets will be probably coming out on the market about 1997, 1998. What we've done with the arrival of the I mean, in fairness to the pad thing, the same thing happened with phones. Roger has been developing the software and also the look of the paper. Uh, so what you see are headlines and stories and graphics. Uh, you see the same identity of the of the publication that you would expect. I so badly want to know because we've watched on this show on on vhs vault before i like retro futurism so we've watched stuff where it's people from the past 20 30 years ago developing stuff like this where you go oh that is actually pretty close like that they were clearly actually involved in the like grassroots original like ideas of how do we do this thing it makes me want to know what's the equivalent of this today there have to be people in a lab somewhere designing shit like this but for the next 20 30 years what are they doing? <laughs> like, what is the idea? I want to know. I want to know where, where, where they're, they're, th they're thinking. What are they thinking? To see in print. I mean, it looks like a newspaper. I hate that you just said crypto. The color photographs that's right. at the moment. And that's our intent. We're, we're Crypto's not an actual technology as much as it's a scam, so... Doing is creating what we call a... I guess an, a, 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 an append-only distributed ledger is its own thing. But, like, cryptocurrency is a scam. Bridge of familiarity. So that as you go from a printed edition to an electronic edition, there's nothing too scary about it. And additionally, what we've done is to add background material for that story that uh, can be there every time that story appears. Uh, on, for example, in this case, a story about Sarajevo has information about the different ethnic groups and the history of the region, geography, and the different UN peace proposals. When the newspaper becomes electronic, all sorts of possibilities emerge. The photographs can come alive. It's like having a TV within a newspaper, but you're in control. Until the videos start playing automatically without you clicking anything. Thanks, news sites. Gone. It's gone. 
balls in the air. It might be deep enough to score a run. Batten underneath. He's got a great arm. Here comes also, not enough ads. Where are the ads? There should be ads everywhere. There should be an ad in the middle of this baseball clip. It's a runner. Here comes the throw. They got him. They got him. He never got to the plate. The interesting thing about the video clips in this model is they don't require you to wait until the video clip is finished to be able to go on to something else. Uh, so if you're uh, uh, listening to a video clip of a politician, for example, and you want to turn them off, this is an American imperative, and we all need to be a part of it. And that's pause. Uh, they're pausing. It's impressive that you can pause it. Understandable, considering they just had a linear television at the time. That is kind of funny that they're touting a pause feature. It's not enough. You can even 30 years. Even get the tablet to read to you in a human sounding voice. Geneva. Adopting the language and locale of a bygone diplomat. One of the common problems with a printed newspaper, of course, is you can't do anything else while you're reading the newspaper. You can drink some coffee, but hard to, uh, hard to fix uh, the breakfast or to uh, drive a car. Just as papers today can be picked up from newsstands, the electronic version could be downloaded into the tablet from specially set up machines, or they could be delivered down the line to your home. Uh, here in bold. Internet. Internet. It's incredible to me that they're not, I guess, they didn't, did they, did they not assume people would have in-home internet as often? This was 95, but by then people were starting to get internet, I guess. I guess they would probably assume, no, they'll be a little, kind of like, do you remember, um, the Nintendo DS Street Pass thing where there'd occasionally be, like, kiosks or something where you could download specific demos or things? It's like they thought it would be more like that where there would be a newsstand, quote-unquote, where you would go, and it would have a thing where you could download the paper from it. The form factor is usually where we get stuff wrong, interestingly. Older, uh, you might be able to, uh, to get a copy of the, of the Sydney newspaper that you subscribe to. Uh, or when I'm in Sydney, the, the next time, perhaps being able to get a copy of I know of it was dial-up, but people still had it at home. New York Wi-Fi wasn't a thing yet. Times or the uh, the Washington Post. At least not at the At the same time, it's being published in its own city. I don't know exactly. I noticed there's even advertisements there along the bottom. Oh, yes, there's going to be no escape from the advertising. <laughs> uh, some people think that advertising is, is a terrible thing, but in fact, for most people... Who read newspapers uh, advertising is uh, just as important information as the editorial content the difference in the electronic version is that it's interactive you can order the products directly from the advertisements we can actually uh, buy or for example in this case of a of a sporting goods store uh, we have a contest that you can enter here uh, right. it entices you to to fill out a form and send that in and we use a wireless <laughs> someone's asking for my information on the internet better give it to them vacation link so you know i could be sitting having breakfast at the local coffee shop and uh see this and fill it out and uh electronically send it in uh, uh, without any delay and at a very low cost the paper version won't disappear overnight more likely is a gradual decline. In a way, it'll be sad to see these presses wane. But on the other hand, there will be environmental benefits. Fleets of delivery trucks and enormous quantities of paper will no longer be required. Damn, what was that from? Is that like a whole show? That interests me. ABC Science. Okay. Australian Broadcast Corporation, not the ABC American Broadcast Corporation. It's interesting. ABC Science. Ooh, they still exist, apparently. Can I find old stuff? Old. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to actually go searching for more stuff from that. Gate Northwest, 2,000 feet, Cherokee, so straight in on that.
of the things you'll find is I think the web has gotten people connected to information, so it's very easy for me to go out now and find information about a number of things. What we're trying to do with the palace is actually connect people up with other people. So this one is from 1997. This one is about an internet chat room. An avatar is uh, your representation of yourself as you go online, since obviously you can't take yourself with you as you go on the internet. It's what you want yourself to look like to other people uh, in the online environment. So it can be a picture. It's so funny that we like had a word for this when you take it for granted now that you just maybe have like a profile picture. You don't think of it as an avatar, right? You just think of it as your profile picture at best. Picture of yourself that shows up, or as you see on the screen here, it can be a number of different characters that you would have created and chosen for your representation. Of course, they're horny posting. We're represented by this little bubble up here called Gary W. And what I'm going to do here then is connect up to something which I have an interest in, which is uh, good music. And we're going to go into the House of Blues. You guys want to hang out in my chat room? Alice. So there's six of us uh, together in the room. The other thing that you find is uh, people can set props in the room. So if I click on the guitar, I get a little bit of sound that'll come back. And all this is done by the people that designed the site. So and again, we can have a uh, conversation with everyone in the room. So anything I type now, everybody can see. If I click on one person in particular, like I'll click on big dog up here and say hi big this is just 2d vr chat dog except there isn't an anime girl and a stormtrooper making out in the corner each okay. bear says it's a good thing we don't have chat rooms anymore it might lead to discord and, uh, funny music do you like he says i like rock and roll <laughs> you're in the wrong place and the blues, okay. <laughs> a couple hours a day. So th that's pretty typical, actually, of the people in this environment. Um, people range from getting online and just going and exploring some of these sites to some people actually spend considerable time. And this is a lot of their social uh, interaction is being able to go in with a group of friends now that have built up in a community. Having all your social interaction on the internet. Mmm, what other noises could I make to make me less uncomfortable? Maybe that happens to be on cyberspace as opposed to <laughs> maybe uh, down down on the main street. Um, but it's a way for people to be able to get connected, especially even folks that maybe are geographically dispersed or somewhat separated. Maybe they can't get out as easily. This gives people an easy way to get connected. All right, let's ask him why not go out and talk to real people. They're not as attractive as Flavio, <laughs> was boy's comment. I'm too fat to meet people, which I happen to know is not true. <laughs> there will always be people that will say technology is uh, going to be abused and is not making the right things happen in society. But one of the things I think that is healthy about this is it does give people a chance to interact with other people, uh, and not necessarily just people that are located in the same geographic area that you are. You can get online here and talk with uh, another child from Sweden. Or wow, look at that. That sweet Austin Powers ref. <laughs> or something like that. So it expands people's um, view of the world, I believe. Ooh, they really did and not know how to change the frame rate on that camera, the refresh rate to... <laughs> Jesus Christ, the and flickering. right now what we're actually finding uh. is what this is taking time away from in a lot of cases is television or some of the other um, more traditional forms of entertainment or media. And I think from that perspective, uh, it's good for people to have a variety of different kinds of experiences. Oh, that was kind of interesting. Reeves are big stars. They sure are, but they play second fiddle on your computer. <laughs> Pam Anderson hugs the floor. An intense Mel Gibson gazes at you with stunning blue eyes. And Mario Van Peebles dons war paint. Welcome to this year's hottest online celebrities. Millions of people visit popular star sites each year. Angela Gunn, the web expert of Yahoo Internet Life magazine, tells Extra. Yahoo Internet Life magazine. <laughs> 
feels like a joke from a Paul Verhoeven movie. <laughs> The celebrity images posted on the net are the modern-day equivalent of old-style pinups made popular by Marilyn Monroe. This is the pinup of the 90s. This is, you know, this is... This is the pinup of the 90s. The Can we start calling things the blank of the 90s when it doesn't apply at all? Bigger beat, the fan magazine. And which celebrities made the hot list? Yahoo! Magazine tallied the figures and came up with the top... Yahoo! Internet Life Magazine is a real thing! Sick. Was a real thing. Mel Gibson, Keanu Reeves, and Mario Van Peebles are this year's cyber hunks. They're I'm sure all of those people are fine and nothing of any of them happened bad. Keanu's fine to my knowledge. I don't know anything about the, the, the Van Peebles, gentlemen. Digitized images where the Mel Gibson, uh, Ixnay, Ixnay on the El May Ibsen gay. Most requested by the almost 40 million people now using the internet. Cyber babe Sandra Bullock and Pamela Anderson logged into the top of the net, but the surprise download favorite was swimsuit model Cindy Margolis, named the sexiest woman online. People started downloading swimsuit pictures of Cindy at the rate of about one every 10 seconds. I absolutely love the internet. Now, many would-be models are following in her electronic footsteps and signing up with online modeling agencies. And if downloaded enough times, they might become stars in the real world. Never know. You can see more of Cindy with Extra Online. Check out our area, Inside America Online. Just type in... Oh, this is aged so badly. Some call them modest get-togethers, others hedonistic romps. For the next 53 seconds, we'll take an in-depth look inside Diddy Parties. Diddy once threw a party on a jet flying around the world. Now, it started on a Tuesday and somehow ended on the previous Sunday. I don't know how he did that. Now that I'm engaged, I've decided to slow down a little. Three Diddy Parties a week, maybe four. Well, not including the weekends. Well, I remember one day we went to this Diddy party. Well, what happened? Lil John forgot his pimp cup. Yup. d Rock went to Diddy and asked if he had a pimp cup. Lil John can borrow. Man, he had a whole bunch of pimp cup. He had a pimp set. It's hard to say which is more off the hook. A Diddy party or a Diddy after party. Or a Diddy after after party, which is basically a pre-party for the next Diddy Party. The Diddy Party legend continues tonight at 8 p.m. 7 Central. If you didn't hear, Diddy's been indicted for sex trafficking. Yeah. Valentine's Day on the internet in 1996. Ooh. Flowers Fifth Avenue. It's one of those days that, that we look... Hold on. There we go. The Valentine's Day season has always been busy for Flowers Fifth Avenue. It's one of those days that... Oh, they shot this on Beta, I think. That crisp, clean Beta look. That we look forward to, but we don't look forward to at the same time. And while they stick to the traditional means of business, cutting flowers and delivering them personally, they're venturing into new territory on the Internet. I have the homepage on the Internet. But I haven't received any orders from it yet, because um, I've only been on there just a couple of months. Now, who would that be aimed at? Uh, just local people, or would it be aimed at... Um, the news is that a local store has a website. That's the news. The news is that this flower shop has a website. More at 11. It'd be national. Really? It'd be just like a wire service would be. More businesses are using the internet to sell their goods, which means there will be more Valentine's goodies on the net. You can find anything from fresh cut roses to German roasted almonds. But not everything costs money. There are some fun freebies for Valentine's Day. You can send a friend an e-Valentine card. Or you know, if it was an NFT, it would be non-fungible, and you can um, be a douchebag about it to your friends. Or even have someone send one back to you. There's even a site where you can propose marriage on the internet for Valentine's Day. There's a gentleman from England proposing to a woman from Ann Arbor, Michigan, saying, Will you marry Ann Arbor, Michigan? Maybe. We did public, it. But then again, it's probably cheaper than renting a blimp.
But will shopping for your cyber sweetie through the internet ever really replace hand-delivering a dozen red roses? I don't know. I don't know how fast it's going to grow. At some point, it could very well be, but I don't know how fast it's growing yet. <laughs> Awkward pause. I assume that was the raw beta tape, and it would cut off. There's a little bit of trail on the end on either side at the beginning and end. <laughs> and examples of the facet hmm. let me save this one there's a lot of stuff that was sent and i want to make sure this is saved so we have it for next time cool so thanks everyone for hanging out um if you're from the raid and you haven't do me a favor Give me a follow. We do stuff like this at least once a week or so. Um, I stream most days, though. We do a lot of different topics. This is usually my fun day where I get to watch old VHS stuff. Other days we look at, like I said, uh, politics, uh, conspiracy theories, debunking them, discussing what conspiracy theorists believe and why they believe it. It's fun. We hang out. We joke. It's pretty chill. So uh, give a follow if you like. Love you too, Mr. Blast. <laughs> Follow is Halloween Town still here? Halloween Town, do you have anyone you want me to raid? I know your power went out, so I guess I don't know if you're still around. If not, no big deal. <laughs> I don't see you, actually. Your power must have died, or your phone must have died. So I'll do someone else next time. You can let me know if there's someone. Speaking in tongues. Up yours. Right. Have a good night, everyone. Uh, see you tomorrow for something. Not sure what. Maybe Chud's. Been a bit since Chud's. Would make sense. See you then, and have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.